host Alex Jones. Our websites are InfoWars.com and PrisonPlanet.com. But if you're a TV viewer, you can see this right now. Radio listeners, go to DrudgeReport.com. The entire top left-hand corner of DrudgeReport.com is Clinton targets Alex Jones. He responds, I'm not scared of you bully. Kimmel's pickle caper. Now it's the vast alternative right-wing conspiracy. And Paul Joseph Watson blows it out of the water with this report he just filed minutes ago. <laughs> Hillary Clinton interrupted her coughing fits, seizures, and three-day naps to attack the alt-right. Clinton savaged Trump for weaving dark conspiracy theories. Oh, you mean dark conspiracy theories like a YouTube video being responsible for Benghazi. What difference at this point does it make? She then proceeded to weave her own gigantic dark conspiracy theory. Namely that Vladimir Putin controls InfoWars, Breitbart, and the entire old right. And the grand godfather of this global brand of extreme nationalism is Russian President Vladimir Putin. <laughs> That's funny because I don't recall receiving my paycheck in the mail from the Kremlin. It's also what happens when you listen to the radio host, Alex Jones. Right, so Trump is the conspiracy theorist for listening to Alex Jones, yet you just asserted that a former KGB officer under the communist government of the Soviet Union is now the leader of conservatives in America. What does that mean? Of course, Hillary failed to identify the real leader of the alt-right. <laughs> Oh yeah, and according to another one of Hillary's dark conspiracy theories, Trump is responsible for bullying in schools. The Trump effect. Bullying and harassment are on the rise in our schools. Right, because it's not like Trump supporters have been viciously attacked and harassed by leftists for the last six months solid. But wait, it gets even funnier. Hillary began reading out headlines written by Milo Yiannopoulos. <laughs> Hello. Birth control makes women unattractive and crazy. Nobody wants to fuck you. Would you rather your child had feminism or cancer? He is taking hate groups mainstream and helping a radical fringe take over. Oh, you mean like you and Obama have been doing for the last two years? by mainstreaming Black Lives Matter, a group that has inspired cop killers and whose ideological inspiration is on the FBI's most wanted terrorist list. These are racist ideas, race-baiting ideas, anti-Muslim, anti-immigrant, anti-women, all key tenants making up the emerging racist ideology known as the alt-right. So posting dank memes makes you an evil racist, but openly praising and describing as your mentor a man who founded a KKK chapter called Black People Mongrels and campaigned against the Civil Rights Act. My friend and mentor Robert Seabird. That's just fine. Hillary also said that the alt-right is anti-women. This from the so-called feminist who takes hundreds of millions of dollars from a country that treats women little better than cattle. Nigel Farage, who stoked anti-immigrant sentiments to win the referendum, to have Britain leave the European Union campaign with Donald Trump in Mississippi. Yeah, the key word there, Hillary, is win. He won because the tactic of constantly calling him a racist failed, just like your speech. <laughs> but seriously, if the alt-right are trolls, who inside Hillary's campaign thought it was a bright idea to do the one thing you're not supposed to do with trolls? Witches feed the trolls. The alt-right only succeeds if you respond. You just walk straight into a trap. It's a trap! The people running your campaign are complete <laughs> idiots who don't understand how the internet works. This has backfired more than any of us could ever dream of. Hundreds of thousands of new people are now coming to our websites, where we'll continue to educate them about your failing health, rampant corruption, and sneering, arrogant elitism. Thanks, Hillary. Racist, 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 racist. Ladies and gentlemen, start your engines because this is the Info War. It's Friday. I'm your host, Alex Jones. Get ready because we're taking the fight to the next level. The power structure of the Anglo American technocratic global combine 
as they describe themselves, that's their term for themselves, are establishing a authoritarian, autocratic, centralized world government. And for over 130 years, major banking associations uh, in their own corporate monthly letters, uh, there's been books written on this, talked about taking over education in the West and dumbing people down and reversing the 400-year-old, at that time, renaissance, now 500-plus. And they've done a pretty darn good job on average. The problem is intellectual, true understanding, true liberty is like fire in the description of Thomas Jefferson. And so unless you extinguish it all, tyrannical, autocratic, plutocratic waste that centralized status create are like giant tender boxes for liberty to consume. And that's why tyrants are trying to dumb down the human spirit, domesticate us, break up our families, kill the human life force, because to tyrants, to psychopaths, to control freaks, good, strong, vibrant, awake, electrified humans are absolutely, totally horrifying. Globalist, interbred, psychopathic families, even mainline psychiatrists will tell you, represent genetic bloodlines of psychopathic behavior. And just look at history. But the Renaissance represents the end of that system, and we're still in the Renaissance today, and I believe are about to enter the golden age of the Renaissance. Now, continuing. Mainstream media, particularly mainstream news, depending on the university study or the Associated Press study just from this year, there's four or five studies that are scientific that I've looked at the research papers on how they conducted it, find that the general public trusts the media between a 6 and a 10% level. So let's just give them 10%. 10% of the public trust the media. And in scientific polls, that's what it's been borne out for about 20 years now, that 90 plus percent of Americans in the average poll believe that there were more than one shooter at JFK and believe the government's covering up what really happened. So you can have mainstream media set up there like parrots and repeat for decades that we're all kooks, we're all crazy, as on average, over 90%, it's around 92% in poll after poll, say there's a cover-up. And no matter how many books they put out and no matter how many times they have Hollywood stars come out and tell us we're wrong, it doesn't work anymore. You people are discredited. And that's only one bellwether of what I'm talking about. Now, there is an area they're still winning. We are defeating the dinosaur Decepticon news media. CNN, MSNBC, the compromise and overrun and taking over Fox and other platforms. This broadcast has, quote, radicalized in Hillary's own statements, talk radio. No, we've just helped them take the blinders off. Our listeners have educated them. That's really what's happened. And so they're in panic mode. Now, in the last six, seven years, they've shifted most of their propaganda focus into entertainment. The Late Shows, the Jimmy Kimmel Lives, the propaganda placement that is put into TV shows and movies and fiction, they admit this is going on. When they have Obama on Jimmy Fallon pushing the Trans-Pacific Partnership, a secretive world government combine that even the left says is completely authoritarian and a nightmare. Legalizing slavery, slave labor, uh, restricting free speech, destroying sovereignty. But then Obama goes on and makes it part of a cute song and saying, yeah, you know me, I'm down with TPP. But no amount of fancy suits and perfect lighting and beautiful music can, can spice up the rotten dead possum you're trying to serve. You can put delicious gravy on it. You can put perfume in the air. You can light it perfectly. It tastes like Bravo Sierra.
because it is. And that's why now, on a weekly basis, Stephen Colbert or Fallon or Kimmel or you know any of these people misrepresents what we say and what we do here on air in an attempt, as alchemists often do politically, to take something that's really dangerous to them and to turn it into a joke. And look, I don't think that people like Jimmy Kimmel are even bad people. In fact, I've had mutual friends that are friends with Kimmel and, and um, decades ago, and they say he's a great guy. I'm sure he is. People like Joe Rogan and others who's hosted shows with him. But the writers at those networks that are putting together the propaganda that they then stand up there and read off a teleprompter and look smart, and they are smart, but the point is they're reading what was written for them. Sometimes they write it. To make me look stupid, you have to understand that I saw a few days ago a Mark Dice video on Picklegate, which he started on Infowars.com. He, he's a correspondent for us from MarkDice.com. And I thought, yeah, the, the pickle top doesn't pop of the pickle jar. And so I'm going to go and illustrate how she's even lying about this. He doesn't really take her pulse. She doesn't really open that pickle jar. I opened four jars and got a tight one. It was kind of tough for me. And I'll guarantee you I'm a lot stronger than Hillary. I'm, I'm not bragging, but I'm a lot stronger than her. So we're being lied to. And then he's, and Kimmel comes out. And is it about Kimmel talking about me? That's not our top story. It's about how this is an illustration or an exhibit to show us how this system is operating. That he says, okay, big deal if we did stage it. And basically admits they did because then they make a joke where they show the security guard behind the scenes opening it to eat one of the pickles. So that's why it was actually open when Hillary opens it. And when he opens it, it's a real video. It pops. It doesn't pop when Hillary opens it. Everyone knows that. The point is that she's lying and staging something there. And by the way, almost everyone agrees with me on YouTube and even on leftist sites because they go, of course, they're not going to have her PR people put her on national live television and not be able to open something. One out of 30, 40 jars, nobody can open. You got to beat the lid off, you know, with a, basically a back of a spoon or a knife. Everybody knows that. Slam it down on the table. Of course they scripted it. Of course she didn't really take her pulse. Of course. But it gets worse. You guys don't even understand. I'm going to explain this to you. Just because I always like to show people the hat trick. I told Pat Riley when I got into work, I said, go get pickle jars. I'm going to troll Kimmel. Watch. It'll be on in the next few days. And I went on air and played Caddyshack clips and said I was joking and said I was having fun and that this wasn't really that serious. And I, and I just wanted to be lighthearted. He goes, this guy is crazy. Look at a grown man spending seven minutes on a pickle jar. This guy's crazy. Then he cuts to a gun, a BB gun. In fact, I, I went and dug one out of my safe this morning. I even locked those up in the gun safe, and I forgot to bring it to work, or maybe Pat Riley did. But the point is that he then shoots the pickle jar to get rid of the evidence with his pellet gun or his BB gun looks like a Glock handgun and says, Alex, you better watch it. You know, the New World Order is basically coming after you. Now, Kimmel, I don't think you want to hurt anybody, but do you understand Hillary brags about being in combat she wasn't in? She talks about, I came, I saw Gaddafi died. It's a failed state. Hundreds of thousands died. It's admitted this woman has a death trail. CNN, Fox News, last night had stories about the four dead staffers and the guy shot four times in the back that WikiLeaks basically says is their source of the DNC emails. Where Hillary's sending her people dressed like Bernie Sanders supporters to attack Trump supporters so that both Trump and the Sanders people, her enemies, look bad. She's a bad lady, bro. And I understand you wouldn't have your job if you didn't have people like her on. But... The misrepresentation that that was all serious is a joke. I mean, they show clips all the time when uh, we bought the uh, creature Zorg or whatever that uh, Captain Kirk fights back in the 60s. I mean, the, the greatest comedy ever. We were going to reenact that, never did. So I wore the lizard head. And then they say, oh, Alex Jones really thinks lizard people are real. No, that's David Icke, not me. 
But I think psychopaths basically operate like a lizard. I mean, they have absolutely no gumption about, you know, treating fellow humans like, like animals, whether it's Mao Zedong or Adolf Hitler. So you guys need to learn what satire is. 90% of that was satire, like when I was playing Caddyshack clips of where he opens the Perrier, but it's already open. And it was to have some fun because, let me tell you, I, some, some of my listeners, I'm going to skip this network break. This is so important. Some of my listeners send me emails. I see the comments going, Alex, the world's in a very serious situation right now. You know, why are you criticizing her with a pickle jar? Sure, it's obviously fake, but there's bigger issues. I can't sit here four hours a day just talking about her emails, which everyone knows she lied about. I can't just sit here looking at images of dead kids that ISIS has cut their heads off and point out how the head of defense intelligence says Hillary and Obama ordered them to put ISIS in command. I've covered it. We broke it. We know it. We hammer it. But I've got to have some fun sometimes. And quite frankly, I never did any of this on purpose. I've been kind of a natural in that, and I don't say that on a power trip. I mean, I'm a natural at having train wrecks. I'm a natural at, at stammering. I'm, but I'm real and people resonate with it. And sometimes, you know, when I get into this comedy mode, I just intentionally, like an idiot savant, start doing really goofy, funny stuff. Like I said, can of pickles 30 times. I didn't know. I just thought just in a quick one second gestalt, I'm going to go on air. I'm going to do this. Just as an example, and I'm going to take over Jimmy Kimmel, and they're going to respond, and they're going to attack me, and, and if I say pickle can a bunch, they're going to freak out on that. I kind of know how those writers operate. I kind of get that 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 you know Woody Allen uh, you know style style uh, Monty Python humor, and so that's what happened. That's what goes on, and so just 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 think about that because. You know, I told more than two people in the office, I said, watch, I'm going to troll Jimmy Kimmel. And that's what we did. And, and it, it's not like I have something over you. It's that I never intentionally tried to bait those guys in in the past. I noticed that when I would have fun, it would do it. So basically now I've just learned to customize it a little bit more. Where anytime I actually sit down and try, I can have the mainstream media saying and doing whatever I want. Because you guys have been hired and trained and manipulated to be programmable. And so I can sit here and program you on air if I want to. But instead, I just get up here and try to just be completely open with everybody as a fellow human and talk to you about the state of the world, the state of history, and what's happening on this planet. They've had national TV shows in the last 20 years many times make fun of me and go, he's the crazy person that thinks they're merging humans with animals. No, I read it in MIT Magazine and the BBC 20 years ago. I covered it on air. Research scientists sent me letters and papers about how they were creating dozens and dozens of different species of part human, part animal clones so they could grow human tissue inside those clones and not have rejection. Now, that, that, that's science you're being given. That, that's a fact. Now it's AP, Reuters. Hey, it's great. We're going to be able to have organs now grown in cows. And the cow is part human so that it doesn't reject the humanoid that is grown inside of it. And the humanoid grows up larger, doesn't have rights. It's not an animal and it's not a human, according to the government. They're talking about robot rights. How about chimera rights? These are the big issues, folks. These are the big ones. We are already in science fiction land, and you're making jokes and lying to your viewers because I said, this is a joke. I played Caddyshack clips, and you know, and they say, look at this crazy guy. He's so serious about a thing of pickles, and, and I get you have license to make it funny. Okay, fine, but when you tell us, that it's no big deal that you staged it. Okay, if we did stage it, what's the big deal? You're there implying she doesn't have health problems and saying we're conspiracy theorists. Dr. Drew, who'd been on CNN with some of the highest ratings on that channel, Headline News, for five years, was let go one week after. He came out and said, look, I'm nonpartisan. She looks ill. 
I've got a stack of news today of more staffers and more dead around Hillary. And then WikiLeaks says we never give up our sources, but yes, he is a source. That's Julian Assange, who's never lied to anybody with these leaks, who's been proven to be impeccable. I said time would tell about him you know, six, seven years ago. I'm here to tell you, impeccable. Goes after Bush for what's wrong. Goes after Clinton for what's wrong. How can you dispute that? And he says, well, we have a source in the DNC. He was probably the source. I can't tell you he's the source, but I'll say he's the alleged source. To get around their pledge of saying we'll never tell you if somebody's a source, they offered $20,000 reward. The police have offered a $25,000 reward. He was shot four times in the back after being tortured. Then made to get on his knees. And now Assange is back on Fox News, and they're like, why are you so obsessed with this guy? Here's the clip. WikiLeaks, in fact, offered $20,000 for information leading to the arrest of Seth Rich's killer. Why are you so interested in Seth Rich's killer? We're very interested in anything that might be a threat to alleged WikiLeaks sources. The police have offered $25,000. Uh, we, we have offered $20,000. Uh, we're not saying that Seth Rich's death necessarily is connected to our publications that's something that has to be established but if there's any question uh, about a source of wikileaks uh, being threatened uh, then uh, people can be assured that this organization uh, will go after uh, anyone who may have been involved in some kind of attempt to coerce or uh, possibly uh, in this case, uh, kill a potential source. Do you have any suspicions on who may have been behind his murder? We have received a variety of information. Uh, uh, we will be reporting that information to the police. I don't think the information so far is enough to um, uh, start uh, pointing any direct fingers. We don't want to compromise the police investigation. Hmm. Trying to read you, Julian, and whether you, yeah, I know you don't want to re uh, reveal your source, yes, but it Democrat certainly sounds like you're suggesting a man who, who leaked information to WikiLeaks was then murdered. Oh, yeah, because the government never murders anybody. connected to our publications, and that person is then murdered in suspicious circumstances, it doesn't necessarily All right, let's stop mean. right there. All Megyn Kelly and the rest of the controlled press has is, you're a conspiracy theorist. You want to tell us that one of the chief Internet operatives over email for the DNC, who was killed days after the leak came out, shot four times in the back after he was tortured. You mean to tell me that? And, and, and meanwhile, again, their intel is that he's probably the leaker. He said that in an earlier interview. But he's not at liberty to say. The police obviously think it's suspicious. He's dead. And then she's like, how ridiculous. And then you got all these other people that, that were DNC folks that were filing lawsuits because Bernie got robbed, they've been ending up dead. And then Stanford Research Institute comes out with a big paper saying, yes, Bernie Sanders won the election, Hillary Clinton stole 11 states. I had been saying 10. I was just, again, humetting it from reading the articles and going from my you know, gut analysis. That's what I do. I'm sorry, I was wrong. It was 11. By the way, I made another mistake yesterday in my response to Hillary Clinton. I said... In her press conference, uh, she uh, she still hasn't had a press conference, I'm sorry, uh, in, in, in her Reno, Nevada speech that had 15 people in attendance, and one of them yells, InfoWars, yeah, Alex Jones! They can't even get 15 people in the room and not have one of them know that they're fighting the New World Order and it's time to just say the truth. I mean, you people are surrounded. The globalists are surrounded. I'm only one little head on this hydra. And you know what happens when you cut off the head of a Hydra. Two more come back. And I don't mean that in comparison to the mythical uh, Hydra of uh, comic books. But to the truly mythical one of Greek mythology as a analogy. Before the New York Times and Jimmy Kimmel say that I believe in Hydras. Now, continuing with this, I cover the Jimmy Kimmel first. Not because, I mean, usually when they attack me or do a funny piece, which is on national comedy TV almost every day. I mean, stuff's going on. I, I don't respond to it. But I did there because that's an analysis. And later, I'm going to play some clips of what he did, what he said. They're up on InfoWars.com. And show you how they debunk themselves in the video where they show the security guard head, open the pickles, and it pops. That's all I'm saying. It's a big deal. You staged it. And you do this confidence game where you act like we're crazy. 
you act like we're nuts because we see you taking her pulse. We see you saying she can open pickles. Oh, but it's a joke. You jump back and forth. It's a joke, but she's a political candidate. She's a war criminal. She's got this trail of death behind her. She brags about having people killed. And then at the end of the piece, you say, Alex Jones, you better watch it. This is a message from the New World Order while you've got a gun in your hand and simulated killing a witness while real witnesses and whistleblowers are getting killed and locked up in prison. And under Obama, we've seen the biggest war on the press and whistleblowers in U.S. history. And we live in a big, giant police state with the borders wide open. But it's funny to laugh at Alex Jones because he's eccentric and he's upset about pickles. No, you got trolled. We'll be back. All right, now I'm going to get into Hillary Clinton and her attack on the alt press. If you go to DrudgeReport.com, DrudgeReport.com, the mothership of the alt right, no, the mothership of true libertarian, patriotic, common sense, classical liberal, don't kill the nation state, don't destroy the family, don't allow the West to be invaded by radical Islam. The true rise of paleoconservatism, constitutionalism, that's what Drudge is. I mean, Drudge is the original. Then you've got people like Trump and others that are, quite frankly, on the bandwagon. And that's fine. And she says, again, in fundraiser emails that went out last week, the alternative right does not have a right to exist. The Ted Cruz's do and the Fox News is, they actually say Ted Cruz and Fox News and Glenn Beck, who's a fake apologist, and goes on all these shows and says, yes, conservatives are racist and bad. I'm sorry. And they go, good, Glenn Beck. Now you'll get some corporate sponsors. He goes on Meet the Press, Face the Nation, you know, and, and, and goes on with Democratic Party operatives who are the host. And, and the party operatives have written op-eds saying they thought they were in the twilight zone to watch Glenn Beck doing this. So there's the headline from last week. Hillary campaign vows to destroy opposition website Breitbart. That's kind of the lead elephant now, you know, because uh, that scares them because Bannon, the head of Breitbart, is uh, heading up uh, the Trump campaign. And, it, and it's so horrifying, you know, that things like this are going on. And what are they going to do? Because this is a group of multinational globalists. These are front people for a corporate takeover of the world. Under TPP, the IMF, the World Bank, the Pope's calling for world government, global carbon taxes. Davos has come out and says they want $100 trillion a decade in, in carbon taxes. Everything we've been saying for decades and that Ron Paul was saying and Barry Goldwater 60 years ago was saying and Ronald Reagan was saying when he was governor of California, it's all come true. And our credibility goes up. Their credibility goes down. And this is how they do it. They do it over and over and over again. And they think you're stupid. But Drudge has the headlines. Clinton targets Alex Jones. He responds, I'm not scared of you, bully. Live. They have a link to the show right there. Kimmel's pickle caper we already covered. Now it's the vast alt-right conspiracy. See, the establishment Republicans, they've always been the placeholder in the last few decades at least since Reagan left, for the controlled left taking over with the controlled right. Now that the, the, the Republican Party, to a great extent, has been recaptured by populists, I'd be happy if the Democratic Party was captured by populists. You could have kind of leftist populists, but still they don't want to be conquered by foreign, you know, TPP. And, and you could have nationalist right-wingers and libertarians, and we'd all work together. And we need two different sides to have debates. But we've got synthetic fake choices, just as Carol Quigley wrote in Tragedy and Hope in 1968 for the State Department. 1,100-page book that they only printed a few thousand copies of. And he writes in the foreword that he had been authorized by the ruling elite to put this out by Bilderberg because their own State Department people and CIA folks couldn't understand how... They were going to control the left and the right, but really have no differences, and, and why they were putting dictators in all over the world. And he explains it to them. We've got a plan for the world. We want dictatorships or centralized systems, and this is what we're going to do. We're going to domesticate everybody. And you can go read 1,100 pages, and you're reading the battle plan. And all I do here is tell you the battle plan. And right after that battle plan came out, they published None Dare Call It Conspiracy 
in 1972, republished in 74, 200 pages that lays out what's in Tragedy and Hope and what Barry Goldwater and others. I mean, Barry Goldwater was in the senatorial. He was the head, you know, chairman of major committees. He was in the meetings where they said, we're going to take all the guns and have the U.N. on the streets and have peacekeeper forces globally, and we give up all our nukes, and we put U.S. troops in Russia and Russian troops here under 7277 memorandum. I mean, I'm giving you the document numbers. These are public. He said, we're not doing that. And Goldwater came out and fought it. So they put out TV ads saying he was a warmonger that wanted war with Russia. The opposite. This is how these people operate. And you're like, oh, God, it sounds like deja vu. Yeah, they're doing the same thing to Trump right now. Trump is like the return of Barry Goldwater, okay? But even better because he's got... Goldwater had a lot of stamina, but, I mean, Trump is slick. And let me tell you, there's no way Trump's fake because he's doing irrevocable damage to them. Even if he fell on his sword later, it doesn't matter because the fact that all these decades of work to expose the globalist plan, right as they're trying to launch it worldwide, it's failing everywhere. And nationalist movements have sprung up in every EU country with polls saying they're all going to leave. Then the big banks try to hold people hostage and the countries just start arresting the foreign bankers that are running their countries. It's not a coup against the corrupt government. It's counter coups by governments against the globalist. And once the globalists are identified, once we're winning the info war, which Hillary admits we are, to Congress four years ago, it's game over. You know, to people like entertainers and people, hey, hey, you live in big houses, you got fancy cars, you sit there and breathe the L.A. smog, good for you. But you see, I have a website and launched a movement 20 years ago that was just a continuation of the same movement for sovereignty and common sense and true liberalism. And see, Hillary goes into the congressional hearings and warns how they're losing the info war against the alt media. See, we're winning a war. She, when she goes and talks to senators, she's like, we're in deep trouble. We're losing the war. We've got to clamp down on the Internet. Four years later, they're getting ready to do it. While you're on TV doing your late shows and making jokes and be having your butts kissed by your interns, that sounds like hell on earth to me. So thank God I'm living in the real world. And my listeners are living in the real world. No matter how many times people go and get some joke I do or, you know, something I'm involved in. And try to misrepresent it. And I don't want to make this whole show about DrudgeReport.com or about Infowars.com. But do you understand, it's two months until the Internet is handed over to the United Nations. The United Nations is sending ten times the observers they've ever sent to our elections this year. But they're not here to stop fraud. They're here to make sure it takes place. They've actually said that. They're here to make sure people don't have to have IDs to vote and all the rest of it. Since when did the UN become God? Since when did they set up the Strong Cities Initiative that's run by the UN, that has the power of the Justice Department behind it, to enforce these edicts against local governments and to take over the police? This is fantastical. If you were the UN backed by big mega banks and the Rockefellers had donated the land to set up this world government 60 something years ago and you were almost there, what's the first group you've got to take over in a covert takeover? Local governments and police departments when you've already got the federal government. Then there's a desperate insurrection by the army mainly. Oh, it's the army. We're not being directed by the army. We're not in bed with the army. I don't even really talk to the army. It's just the doors go psh, open up. The surveillance comes in, the, the, uh, the, the overwatch, all of it. As the U.S. Army, more than any other group, is fighting globalism, fighting our government's alliance with Islamicists. I told you three years before Cy Hirsch, Pulitzer Prize winner, came on, and I said the entire battle plan of shipping the missiles out of Libya into Syria. The, I had all the guests on that laid it out, all the information, how they were funding a proxy army, how they were making deals with Islamicists, how they would then invade Europe in the next stage of destabilization, 
We laid it all out, and then Cy Hirsch came on a year ago or less and said, yes, you're absolutely right. Here's the whole battle plan, and published a huge article in the London Review of Books and in the New Yorker where the U.S. Army refused four years ago to arm al-Qaeda, which they then turned into ISIS to confuse the public names, and to get the public off the trail that Obama and Hillary and NATO and the globalists, and at that time Sarkozy and the rest of them, were funding al-Qaeda. That's why the British voted in their parliament to not be part of it three years ago, because even they were like, this is too much, turning a jihad army loose on Europe after they take down Syria, which is the front door into Turkey and into Europe. You understand, Cy Hirsch came on and said, yes, what you covered, what your guests covered, is it. It's all true. And we had Steve Pachenik on. We had Colonel Schaefer. We had Tosh Plumley. We had, we had him from the CIA pilots to the colonels that uh, formerly headed up the operations against al-Qaeda for the Army uh, to the entire structure. And then... We told you first, General Dempsey, the chairman of the Joint Chiefs, went and told Obama on the eve of bombing of Syria, the military is going to stand down and not going to follow your orders. A soft coup. Oh, but Jimmy Kimmel makes fun of me how my head's in the clouds in cloud cuckoo land. And I'm not attacking Jimmy Kimmel. I, I understand the job he's got as a jester, a court jester for the establishment like salacious crumb to laugh and make fun of what I say and what I do. But I'm not risking my life to be famous, Mr. Kimmel, I'm risking my life to pay back debts to my ancestors and to pay for my progeny's future. And they're going to pay for their progeny's future. And that's something modern people don't know about, but I do. And I'm very happy to pay whatever the bill is. That's called being a man. And they've done everything they can to eradicate that in this culture. And in my own simple way, I'm trying to bring that back. And there are a lot of other people who want to bring that back as well. So let me give a message to Hillary and the globalists and all the rest of you. We know there's been a foreign globalist coup in this country. And large sections of the armed services are aware of what you're up to. And no amount of false flags are going to trick the public into going along with your martial law scenarios and Internet kill switches they admit they've put in place. So understand, you need to stand down. You need to back off. You need to go like Napoleon to some island, and you can just leave, and you can even take your money and, and George Soros and just get the hell out of Europe and get the hell out of the United States and stop it. But you're not going to, and I understand that. Because your entire will has been given over to evil, and all you want to do is bring down what's good. I get it. I get it. I'm committed to my mission. You're committed to yours. And that's all the intel I ever needed, and that's all the intel you ever need about me. But when you do these threats, and you have these threats on TV with a darkening room, and Alex, this is your message from the New World Order. Oh, I know, you just had Hillary on doing fake stunts, how she's got good health. And I know those people are getting killed all the place. I mean, I was on the air 20 years ago talking about the Clinton death list. And Fammy Malik, the Arkansas medical examiner, they'd find arms and legs and heads chopped off bodies, he'd rule their suicides. I always love how they threaten you, and then... Yo, you know we can kill you. Oh, really? You, you came? We saw he died? You go and make failed states? You go turn loose hundreds of thousands of jihadis to kill over 200,000 Christians in Syria alone? To chop their heads off and to rape little girls and boys? You mean, you mean you might do... Oh my gosh, I... See, they just don't compute. You look at Hillary when somebody just asks a question in an audience and she starts freaking out like a mental patient and the guy with the EpiPens right there going, it's okay, baby. It's okay, sweetie. We're going to play that clip in a minute. But first, let's play her saying, I came, we saw, he died. It's so funny. You came and set Gaddafi up. He came in out of the dark. He invested all his money in the West. He brought Western companies in and you set him up and killed him and put Al-Qaeda in and then you bragged about it. And I mean, if it was a tough guy bragging about killing people. It's like kind of creepy. But she didn't do it, ever do it herself. She can't even see in front of her. She can't even walk upstairs. But she's an evil vessel. She'll do bad things. And so she's in charge. Let's play that clip of uh, Hillary uh, bragging about how she came. We saw he died. We came. We saw he died. <laughs> we came. 
We saw, he died. We came, we saw, he died. We came, we saw, he died. I love it's a bunch of weird harpy women and, and this you know, group of, 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 of weirdo women that follow her around and Samantha Powers, they got their, these like $2,000 power suits and just like $100,000 jewelry around their hands and the women are all acting like they're at a ball trying to be sexy and they're, they're getting off all narcissistically like, yeah, we're going to fight Russia. Yeah, we spent $5 billion over the country. <laughs> they want to fight, they're going to get it. Oh, yeah, oh, oh, yeah. It's real sick. And it smells of nuclear war. It smells of calamity. Weird, soft demon women in fancy suits with big diamond brooches. Ah, I kill people. Ah. I mean, oh, 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 you might hurt me. Oh, my gosh. Oh, oh, my gosh. See, they want to take that away from us, that we're willing to do whatever it takes. I'm not scared. I, I, I would be scared of serving you. I would be scared of selling out to somebody like you. That's what I'm scared of. I'm not scared of anything you will do to me personally or, I mean, I'm all in, all in, everything, whole deal. My family's all in. So I just want you to know that, I want you to understand that. And uh, the battle lines are getting drawn and you're going to notice energetically, the more you push, the stronger we get. And, and I'm just emblematic. I'm just one little blip here on the radar screen. We're going to come back, get more into Hillary, play some clips of her speech uh, where she... Calls me Darkheart. We've launched a special today, Operation Darkheart, in um, celebration of, of Hillary saying, I have such a horrible dark heart and I'm just the worst person in the world. She must be looking in the mirror. And we're going to sell the Hillary for President shirts at cost. Nine ninety five. that includes shipping. That's right. The shirts cost us like two and a half, three bucks a piece. Then you got to print them. That's a couple more bucks. The shirts cost us about, well, the XXXXs are like six or seven bucks, but most of them cost us four to five dollars. Then shipping's four to five dollars on average. So, and, and after the crew ships it, uh, that's at cost $9.95. Hillary for prison, $9.95, shipping included. $9.95, shipping included. And it's just all about getting the truth out there, exposing what's going on and creating solidarity and meeting like-minded people. That doesn't fund the operation, but it spreads the truth. Everyone take advantage of that and give one of these as a gift today or get an additional one. This is the third edition, another collector that's going to sell out soon. And then separately, we have the new great BioTrue Selenium of InfoWarsLife.com uh, that uh, just came in this week. It's amazing. Go do research on that. And your purchase supports the broadcast, InfoWarsLife.com. Or call toll-free, 888-253-3139. Again, InfoWarsLife.com is where you find the nutraceuticals and the supplements. Stay with us. What you're seeing is the facade that is the establishment collapsing. You've got foreign multinational corporations that own the mainstream media that have gotten away with creating thousands of trillions of dollars in fake money. They've bought up the planet with it. And now they want to basically mop up what's left of the nations and get rid of due process and absolutely social engineer to a level never before seen and engage in total race baiting and balkanization. And Hillary is, as I've said, emblematic of the sickness and the decay and the decrepitude and the rot of the power structure. If you're a radio listener, I'll narrate this, but this is just her again in uh, Nevada last week. She's back now, uh, yesterday. And she's up there and some protester just says something and she freezes up and freaks out even though you can't even hear what the protesters saying and 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 just start shaking and her doctor or whoever it is jumps up there it's the guy that has the tranquilizer dart and says it's okay it's okay let's play that clip one more time no, you okay She was completely insane. Okay, here we are. Here we are. <laughs> okay, we'll keep talking. It's like she's a robot. I've talked to multiple people that have done security details for Hillary Clinton. And I'm not talking about Secret Service, I'm talking about State Department, you know, military stuff. And they said that she'll be riding in a car or she'll just be waiting in an annex building or wherever and she'll just look down bend her head down, and then just robot out, sometimes for 30, 40 minutes, and she's not even sleeping. And then she'll just get, look up and start chewing everyone out. 
and you see her look totally psycho there and go, who dare protest me? Mm. She's on such an insane power trip. And then she said, I want Parkinson's medication in an email that's come out this week from uh, these big leaks that have been happening. And said, I'm so angry all the time now. I keep blowing up at everyone. I need Tranquil. I, I need Parkinson's medication. Is this the one for me? I have executive decision fatigue. It's crazy. But it's a conspiracy that she's sick, ladies and gentlemen. Oh, and I told you false flags are coming. Assassination attempt on Angela Merkel foiled as armed man arrested trying to infiltrate German Chancellor's motorcade in Prague. Miles away, they find some guy, probably a police operative or something, just to create hysteria. The Germans are famous for that. And now there's all this fear. Watch him try some stuff on her. Austria, the, 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 the Nationalist Party, had like 15 points ahead in polls, but still magically lost. And they're going to do the same thing in Germany. This is a permanent government. They're going to a dictatorial model. They think we're stupid. When we start the next hour, I'm going to get into the clips from Hillary's speech yesterday, a bunch of other geopolitical news, and then I'm going to spend five minutes on the Jimmy Kimmel thing and just actually play it and you know show how network propaganda works and how they've shifted a lot of their propaganda from news, because that doesn't have any viewers anymore, to entertainment that still has viewers. I mean, Jimmy Kimmel's got like 5, 10 million viewers, depending on the night. That's a big show. So, I mean, I'm, I appreciate the plugs and everything. It'll just send us more viewers. Listeners, they'll actually come find out what we really do and not what they misrepresented there. And uh, that's really the big trick to all this. It's why they never want to say my name. But we already have a giant audience. It's been giant for a decade. It just gets bigger. I love how you pretend I don't exist. So I don't exist. Or anybody else does. Or Drudge is failing as he's the number one internet website in the world and only growing. It's, it's all just fantasy land by these people, like Hitler in his bunker. Speaking of that... Uh, Hillary is uh, more and more becoming uh, paranoid. We're going to get to that in the next hour. Paul Watson's filed his best report ever. It's up on InfoWars.com. I'm going to add it to some of the articles that I see are linked on Drudge so you can find it easier. Uh, but it's the truth about Hillary's alt-right speech. I, I never air something twice. I aired it at the start of the last hour. I'm going to air it again coming up for new listeners that just tuned in. It's so powerful. Stay with us. Thank you for Hillary for President Church at cost. InfoWarsStore.com. New sale. Globalism now, stripped bare before the world. They wanted to bring in their world government of debt slavery and balkanization and dehumanization without having a debate. They wanted to have a world government without ever even having a discussion that it was unelected and nobody asked to enter it. Kind of like the EU. Only, what, two countries out of 25 plus ever got to vote to enter it. Now they're telling the British, well, you voted to leave, but you can't. That'll only make them more angry. You can always steal one or two more times, but then you run out of gas, boys. And I think you know that. So you want to have a big world war. You're so full of arrogance, bravada, chutzpah. Those of us that aren't megalomaniacs and don't want to destroy the planet are going to stand up and put you in check. And I, I watched the whole Hillary speech. It was like 45 minutes long last night. I'm going to play some of it coming up in the next segment, where she said Putin runs the alt-right, and she runs um, Donald Trump. That is the most insane, bizarre, over-the-top, true conspiracy theory with no proof I think I've ever heard of in my life. I've never been to Russia. I've never been to Eastern Europe. Uh, I, I, I don't have any Slavic bloodlines. Um, my family... I never get into this because everybody says, oh, my family's background, this or that. But, I mean, it's ridiculous, okay? I mean, it's hard to find somebody that's got longer, you know, Mayflower, both sides of the family, right through the colonies in the north and in the south, super prominent people. I'm not even going to get into it because it's just it sounds ridiculous. And then right through to the founding of, of Texas and, and just so much more and inventing things and everything from – Basically, Dr. Pepper uh, to uh, the um, stock exchange in England. That was the Greshams. And that's on the maternal line in my family. The family crest symbol was a grasshopper. And it, it, I mean, that's just a, a few of the highlights. There was also some infamous people I never mentioned. 
And I'm not talking about just kind of related to, I mean, it's just like, it wasn't like there was a breeding program in my family, but these families kind of kept running into each other throughout time out of England and even out of France and Germany because we've had our lineage done way back. I mean, here's an example. My parents, I've really told this story, had two different major religious groups come to them at UT when they were going to the University of Texas and offer to basically pay for their tuition and everything and they would join their churches and everything. And my, and my dad, after, after like a year of trying to do this, was like, why are you going to say, well, we've done your genealogy. And, and, and again, that's what the globalists are all into, ladies and gentlemen. And there are evil genealogies. There are good genealogies. There are families that tend to express good things, families that tend to express bad things. And the globalists know this, and that's why they've got a very, very tight lid on things. And they're trying to manipulate and control. And you've got good bloodlines that you find in every race, color, and creed. And you've got bad ones. And an expression of this is, again, many families are known to have psychopathic tendencies in them in royalty. And interbreeding actually does that. I mean, look at dogs. Uh, overbreeding of dogs makes them act mentally ill, snapping, biting, doing weird stuff. Uh, they might be really, really smart, but they you know, crap in your shoe or, you know, climb in the baby's crib and bite the baby for no reason. You know, they just, they're, they're nuts. And that goes on. And then there's lines of dogs you say that are true and will kill themselves to help you and, and would always be faithful. That's just a paradigm of dogs. Well, it's the same with men. And we're dealing with true abject evil here. I don't know how I went down some bloodline discussion, but when we come back, I'm going to get directly into a bunch of Trump clips, then Hillary's clips, and a lot more. And we're going to open the phones up today as well on this Friday edition. And then we've got Mark Moreno from Climate Depot joining us as well with big developments on that front. Infowars.com. Stay with us. Trump came out yesterday, and we played the clip. We're going to play it again in a moment, and said that Hillary Clinton is a bigot. Then he tweeted more and has made other statements pointing out that she's a race baiter. That's the true form of bigotry is to be so psychopathic, you, you hate everybody, but you're just playing groups off against each other using that. And that's one of the most frustrating things of having to cover all this racial and cultural and class warfare stuff is you emotionally and genetically start actually finding yourself halfway getting into it because you're designed that way, even though you know it's a manipulation. And then it really makes you mad that they're doing that because even though you're not racist, there are people being racist to you, whether you be black, white, whatever, and so you then have that response. Uh, and then we'll get into a bunch of other clips from Trump, but he's absolutely right. They are invoking hardcore division and teaching in public schools, mainly white teachers are, they're the biggest pushers, that whites are inherently bad and how to fix the problem of whiteness. I mean, I was taught just in my few years in community college before I decided to get out of there and, and, and not you know, follow any more education, Almost every class they called us in, and they were all white professors, and were saying that whiteness was inherently bad, and thank God, whiteness, a recessive gene, would be bred out soon. I mean, that's a recurring theme for decades, except for one black professor I had. She was a lady who said, I used to be a big liberal, and she was just telling the class this after I'd been in there about six months. She goes, until I went to Africa, until I saw how bad it was, and I realized the problems are a lot deeper than what's actually being said. And then, and then she got a little bit more into it. But it's just funny that most of the people you see really pushing this you're an effing white male thing, you don't have a right to speak or white, like age Trelix on the famous internet meme. So let's go ahead and go to that clip because it's important. And then I'm going to get the other clips. Here is Trump on Hillary the bigot. And then we will get to the other uh, clips straight ahead after that. And then we're going to also... Uh, today uh, be having Mark Moreno on from Climate Depot. Um, here's that clip of Trump. Please, Secretary Clinton, uh, you haven't done a press conference in more than 260 days. Hillary Clinton is a bigot who sees people of color only as votes, not as human beings worthy of a better future. She's going to do nothing for African Americans. She's going to do nothing for the Hispanics. She's only going to take care of herself, her husband, her consultants, her donors. Absolutely. And, and then he can go further. Black unemployment has doubled. They had like some newspaper last week go, Alex Jones fact checked. 
He says unemployment has doubled. No, I said black unemployment's doubled. And that's with cooked numbers. It's probably more than doubled. If you look at all the other unemployment, it's up too. And that's with them taking 35 million people and growing out of the full business roles of full-time employment and moving them down to less than 25 hours so they're exempt from Obamacare. So then those people have two jobs. That's counted as more jobs in the economy and new jobs because you're working two, three jobs. Now let's go ahead and go to the next clip. Uh, this is uh, Donald Trump compares Clinton emails to Watergate. Well, it's, it's, it's far worse uh, than Watergate because she said she didn't alter those and none were classified. She's been caught lying. But we've reached that moment where she's now above the law, but not above the laws of nature. As the Associated Press documented, more than half of the meetings Hillary Clinton took as Secretary of State with people outside government were Clinton Foundation donors. <laughs> Hillary's chief of staff received more messages from the Clinton Foundation's chief operating officer than just about anybody else. 85 donors alone that she met with as secretary gave the foundation $156 million. And I know many of these people, I know many of these people, these are not people that are going up to pay their respects and say, Madam Secretary, how are you feeling? Isn't it a beautiful day? The weather is so beautiful. These are people that want things for their donation. These are people that expect things for their donation. And when you follow it out and you see the people that left their office, you take a look at what those people, those companies, and those countries got. Believe me, you will find out it is plenty. And it's come out. It's come out. I mean, they have the email so far, and Assange says of work-related emails she failed to turn over, including the new discovery this week of 15,000 more work-related emails she did not disclose. Oh. What is being uncovered now is one of the most shocking scandals in American political history. It's Watergate all over again. It's Watergate. It is Watergate Square. Now, let's expand on that a little bit. Chelsea got $6 million a year. $6 million. She lives in a $10.5 million penthouse, free jets, cars, everything's paid for the foundation. Their whole life is paid for the foundation. They use the foundation's billions as a weapon system. Their global initiative has raised $69 billion in the last decade. But she says she doesn't get anything out of it. When she went into the governorship, she had nothing. She was worth millions when she left that. And then when she left the White House the first time, she was worth more than $30 million. Now she personally is worth hundreds of millions that they admit. And she admits she has secret bank accounts all over the world. But that's okay. If I set up a secret bank account and put $100,000 in Switzerland, I'd be investigated. But not her. Because, again, she's above the law. Now, let's go ahead and go to the next clip here. Trump's campaign manager, not the overall chairman, but the, the manager, she has come out and, and said, well, we're not completely clear yet on our immigration stance. And then Trump comes out and says, no, no, I am. There could be 5 million, there could be 8 million, there could be 10 million, there could be 20 million, there could be 30 million. It's more like 35 million illegals in this country. The truth is they just go back and forth. Now people are coming in from China all over to have their babies for free. This is crazy. And... They spin it like, oh, you flip-flopped. You're going to get easy on the immigrants now. He said the felons, the people that are here that have long list of felonies that have been deported before, you're going to be sent back to your country of origin first. Then there's going to be a national program, because this is what he's talked about previously a year ago, where you basically go sign up, and then if you're not a criminal, you just go, and in a week, whatever, then you get processed right back in. Because he talks about how it's impossible right now, it's super hard to be a legal citizen. You have to jump through a lot of hoops. Because they want you illegal to be an underclass they control, who they can then skim off of and control. That's the Democratic Party. The Republicans want cheap labor, so they're in on it as well. And they don't care if, you know, the Democrats set up some race-based political system a decade down the road, because they just want money and don't care. They're going to have bodyguards anyways, no matter what happens to the Second Amendment.
So they spin this like Trump is flip-flopping. No, Trump always said there are a lot of great people here from around the world, and we're going to give you a path to come here legally. But if you are here illegally, just like if I fly into Mexico and I'm given a visa to be there for a week, and they, and they stamp on your card, okay, you came in this day, you're leaving that day. If you try to leave two days late after that, many times they'll arrest you or fine you. They have some of the most stringent rules in the world. Mexico makes Southwest Airlines, when it lands in Cancun, take off the minute the tower says, no other country does this, and land within a certain time, or they will send the plane back to the United States. China has tens of thousands of women a month landing to have their babies for free. Chinese women now outnumber the Mexicans coming in. We are a joke, people, of having to pay for all this. And he simply says, you're not going to do it, and we're going to build a wall, and he's the biggest demon, and everybody's hurt. Like, we're two years old. Oh, he took our sucker away. He's so mean. He hates us. We're not a country if we don't have a border. Everybody else does this, and it's okay when everybody else does it. From Russia to Mexico, but not us. Because we've been captured by globalists. They used our open society to do it, and they're using a bunch of desperate immigrants as their cannon fodder. So I don't dislike the immigrants, many of them victims of globalism. I dislike the larger program. Here is Trump on no path legalization unless they leave the country and come back. We'll see what happens. And Anderson Cooper won't shut up the CIA operative, admittedly CIA, in disinformation. This is a PSYOPs officer. Won't let Trump talk, but Trump still runs over him. Here it is. First, I want to see... What's going to happen? We're going to deport many people, right. many, many people. The vast majority the of those 11 million are not Well, criminals. we don't know They've that. We're going to find crimes. out who they are. We have crime all over this so country. If they, if they haven't committed a crime, is there going to be a path the to first legalization? Thing we're going I'm talking to about do. citizenship. No, there's not a path. There is no path to legalization. You talk about paying unless back taxes, people identity. leave the country, unless, well, when they come back in, if they come back in, then they can start paying taxes. So they still have but to leave the country. But there is no path to legalization unless they leave the country and come back. So that means of the 11 million who are here, even if they haven't committed a crime. Well, you don't know. Again, you keep saying 11 million. You don't know what the number is. You know, millions well, of people. Many, that's the estimate. And using the existing laws of our country, using the existing laws, millions of people are deported every year. Right. You know that, yeah. right? You know, people don't talk about that. It's Obama. They don't talk about that. Right. No, but you have a lot, a lot of people being deported. We're going to do that vigorously. We're going to go with the laws that are existing. But we're going to have a very strong border. And we're not going to have people pouring back in. And when these people, the drug lords and all of these guys that are thrown out, they're not coming back into the country. So if you haven't committed a crime and you've been here for 15 years and you have a family here, you have a job here, Will you be deported? We're going to see what happens once we strengthen up our border. We're going to have a strong border, as strong as any border there is anywhere in the world. We're going to have a real wall. We're going to have tremendous protection, both technological protection and everything else. And then we're going to see what happens. But there is a very good chance the answer could be yes, we're going to see what happens. Before I do anything, I want to get rid of the bad ones. And there are a lot of them. I want to get rid of all of the bad ones, and we're going to do that. That'll be the single first order I sign. We're going to stop. Right now I'm in New Hampshire. That is beautiful. Okay, so he's not flip-flopped. It's not true. Another hoax. He never dropped out. They're faking the polls. It's all lies. We know that. Just keep getting the word out. We're going to come back now with Hillary attacking yours truly. Stay with us. You know, Hillary, you failed back in the early 90s to strangle the Western Journalism Center that I think really is the vanguard of patriotic libertarian conservative media that became world net daily and even was before drudge uh and, and it's not about singling people out for credit people need to know that they you know their own foundation their own library i keep going back to this all the time the, the documents have been released via a lawsuit said we've got to shut this down this is dangerous well look like looks like you failed so the good news is you've tried and tried and tried and tried and tried and you keep failing and failing and failing. And the audits and the harassment and the death threats and the PIs and all of it hasn't helped you. And look, more leaks are coming out, even though the whistleblowers are getting shot four times in the back. You've taken our restraint and the fact that a lot of folks have been in a trance for weakness. But tyrants always find out when they start killing people openly, it's the beginning of the end. If you would have gone with soft power, you'd still be in control.
but you're losing control very, very fast. Speaking of DrudgeReport.com, for TV viewers, radio listeners should just go there. You can see it. How is the empire going to strike back? Well, right there. Headless Uber. I love how Drudge does that because I would just come out and say, look, Uber admits their plan is to have driverless cars. They admit they want to have a monopoly. Uh, it's hooked into Rahm Emanuel's brother with billions of investment. That's why they're allowed to operate in all these liberal cities, even though they undercut the unions and screw everybody. I mean, I'm all for having competition and being picked up, but Uber wants a monopoly themselves and wants to work with the state to create one. I mean, it's even worse. It's taking innovation, but controlled innovation, so it takes over the market. Just like Google's doing, so they can control information now and, you know, delist stories about Hillary's health. Headless Uber, their goal, they said this three years ago, but now they admit it openly, that's Gizmodo, spotted a self-driving Uber in Pittsburgh. That's right. They're actually putting self-drivers on the road. They've got the insurance. They're willing to pay. Statistically, there have been a lot of crashes, a lot of problem with driverless cars that Ford's testing, Google's testing, Uber's testing. And now they drive around with these big antennas on, just like Google, grabbing your info, tracking what you're doing. We have to make a decision to not be displaced by these because they admit. I told people this 20 years ago, but now it's admitted. I can just see it, common sense. They're going to come out, and they're now doing it, and say, humans just aren't as safe as computers. Well, you can pay a lot more on insurance, but your insurance will be 10% of what it will be if you just go with driverless. And you'll still drive it. Toyota and Mercedes are already like this. You already pay more for their luxury models like Lexus, where, oh, it has all these smart things that beep, and it'll stop if you don't stop, and it'll keep you from swerving. You're already in a robot car. And they're killing people all the time with them, like Michael Hastings. I talked 20 years ago about people being killed, uh, how, how they could program cars already to be driverless and kill you. And some of the leaks that are going to be coming out, a little, little birdie told me, are going to be dealing with different agency programs and protocols to use the commandeering and hijacking of vehicles that are remote control to kill you. Well, of course, if in the old days it was how to cut brake lines and how to take the bolts off the wheels so that once you sped up to 70 miles an hour, you know, just how to set it where the wheels would come off. Like happened to Nigel Farage, the leader of UKIP. Like happened to his airplane. Pilot can't talk very well, but he's all right as long as you don't unplug him. God bless him. But Farage climbed out of there, bleeding face half torn off, and was back in the saddle a few months later. And quite frankly, I don't blame him wanting to kind of back off now and ride off in the sunset at least for a while because it's not even that I'm tired or not even that I'm scared of him killing me. At a certain point, it's, it's, it's kind of embarrassing, even though I'm doing it for the right reasons, to always be hopping around, you know, in front of the dragon, spitting on it, kicking it in the nose, pointing it out to everybody. I mean, even though I want this mission, parts of me at a certain point were like, man, I wish other people stepped forward so they can have their time to roll the dice over and over again. I just thank God that I'm still alive. Thank you, God, and thank you, listeners, for your prayers. I'll get to the Hillary clip and Paul Watson's report. Stay with us. Hillary Clinton is now the biggest conspiracy theorist on the planet. They call us a conspiracy theorist when we see billions given to their foundation. And then the people that give the money are given even bigger concessions by the State Department. That's two plus two equals four. Years ago, everybody talked about how the foundation was a fraud. Now we have the emails proving it. So it's not a conspiracy theory if you say heat up water to 250 degrees on your stovetop and put three or four eggs in there because you're going to make deviled eggs, that that's going to boil those eggs. No, it's two plus two equals four. So much of what we do is just common sense. She says it's a conspiracy theory that she ever had stolen glory and lied in uh, the Balkans and said that she was under sniper fire. We have the CBS and NBC video of her not being attacked and, and war wasn't going on for 50 miles around her. Total lie. Then she said, oh, the plane was shot up coming in on landing. That wasn't true either. But she just says, conspiracy theory. And David Knight had a great point. He came in here today to talk to me. And he said, listen, I know you're probably going to respond to all these attacks today, but how about we just move forward on all the corruption she's engaged in because she never responds 
when she's caught red-handed, she just moves on with the attack. And, and he's got a good point. But my broadcast overall, and so the different hosts have different angles and things that they're strong in, my broadcast isn't even so much about defending InfoWars or attacking the system. It's about getting people to realize how the system works because once you know how they operate and their tricks, you will understand it all on your own and won't even need to tune in to Alex Jones to know what's going on. And that's even kind of a condescending statement. I only have my perspective on things. It's very truthful. It's still from my perspective. It's not perfect. We need to get a culture going again of thinking and understanding and knowing dirty tricks. I talk to people in radio and TV and networks, and they can't believe that I can sit there and watch what they're doing and see the little tricks and stuff. And they tell me, well, even our hosts don't know the tricks. They just do what we say. How do you know all these tricks? This is stuff top consultants uh, you know, come in and we pay millions for. I, and by the way, I don't have the energy, the stamina to sit here and do the tricks. I just know what I'm seeing. them. Here's one, a super good looking woman looking at you at a teleprompter like she is in love with you across the table at an Italian food restaurant. And you know, in 30 minutes, you're going to be at her house with her. And this is really exciting. They sit there with those women and train them how to just, oh, I'm like, oh yeah. Oh, baby, oh, oh my gosh. Oh, oh, oh. I mean, this, that's just one level. But they stack on so much fakeness that the true secret weapon of genuineness is gone. And then you get Hillary, who's like a stuffed mannequin that they roll out there, except when she gets on a power trip and looks all crazy like a borderline personality disorder meets a psychopath. And, uh, you know, like when the Secret Service uh, runs up and the doctor runs up with the EpiPen and, you know, they see a woman, uh, you know, jump up and say something to the crowd and Hillary kind of flips out, gets this weird look on her face. And he goes, it's okay, baby. It's okay. She goes, oh, oh, it's okay. I mean, this she looks like, I'm sorry, she looks like what I've seen in movies, which is reenactments of real things I've occasionally seen. We've all been walking out of a hotel or walking out of a restaurant and you see a pimp with two good looking women. You know, he's a pimp. And, and one of the girls is drugged out, and she's kind of flipping out, and he goes, it's okay, baby. It's all right. It's all right, sweetie. And they just kind of, then they, I, it's all right, baby. It's all right, baby. I mean, th th this was literally, this is the handler that goes around behind her, whoever this black doctor is. We find his name with this tranquilizer pen behind her. Can, can, can we play that again? I, I know I'm springing this on you. And, and then we'll go into Hillary attacking me. But here's the deal. She released right after the speech, the quote, speech. And I looked at it last night and went back and watched the speech. Only two other times did she go off the speech. She went off the speech on me and gets this crazy look in her eye and then leans back like she's Emperor Palpatine and you know, just being attacked by Mace Windu and just goes, oh, his heart, his heart. Well, we have a special, and then I'm going to get the video. It costs us $5 roughly to buy the shirts, then to print them, and then to ship them here, right here in the U.S. Printed in the U.S. I think they're made in Mexico, or they'd be $10 a piece. We do sell shirts made in the U.S. for 20-something you know, bucks, but it costs 10 bucks just for the shirt before printing. But the point is, we have the Hillary for President shirts, uh, and uh, this is called Operation Dark Heart, uh, to celebrate how ridiculous she is. $9.95 shipping included. So you don't pay shipping. It's $9.95. That is cost. For a Hillary for President shirt, we've never, never gone this low, except when I did it for five ninety five, dollars and then you had to pay for shipping. So I guess that was a little bit more. Get your shirt today. No excuses. You see the huge effect it's having as we realize how strong we are, as you meet like-minded people. Give a gift of Hillary for President shirt. Wear it out in public. Let them see it. It's a great conversation starter. You can go to InfoWarsStore.com or call toll-free 888-253-3139. And we have the new bio-available BioTrue Selenium from the powerful mustard seed. From our research, this is the very best selenium out there. Another one of those key missing links, just like iodine and vitamin C. They all three go together. But people know about vitamin C, not about iodine. We have the best out there, the cleanest, uh, X2. And BioTrue Selenium helps support immune system, but way beyond that, it's used in all electrochemical activities. If you don't Here's an example in studies in males. If you don't have enough bioavailable organic, most of the stuff sold isn't organic, it's synthetic, selenium, your body will take it from the brain for your reproductive organs, your testicles or ovaries. 
that's kind of the joke about you know people that are ha having a lot of hang you know a lot of you know what kind of seem dumbed dumbed down. It, it's not just that you're exhausted; it's draining your actual essence out of your brain. To quote General Jack T. Ripper, uh, and it, that's actually kind of true. But when I quote Doctor Strangelove, Jimmy Kimmel, that satire tagged on for a little bit of fun. Sorry. Uh, but bio true selenium available at infowarsstore.com or by simply calling toll free 888 253 3139. Mandrake, I do not uh, askew the company of women, but I do deny them my essence. And Mandrake saying, Yes, Jack. Have you seen Stanley Kubrick's Doctor Strange Love? You haven't seen it. 1964, incredible film. Uh, and I'm just letting you know that's that's where I'm going with that. Kind of like I played clips of Caddyshack from 1980 and made jokes about the pickle, and then they said I'm all serious about the pickle. I mean, clearly she did not open the pickle jar. We're going to prove that in a moment. But it's all part of the fraud. We made a joke of you and the pickle can that is Hillary Clinton. And who's ever heard of a pickle can? So before I go any further, thank you for your support. You're funding the broadcast. Uh, and this uh, political kamikaze mission, as it's been dubbed properly by the press, I don't want to crash into the side of their uh, conning tower, but politically, if, you know, I don't get all my uh, gun bursts and bombs into the conning tower. I do plan to circle back around and go directly into the conning tower. So that's what we're doing here politically is we're going in. We're not backing off. We're not playing games. We're committed. And that's what humans are meant to do. It feels incredible. So thank you all for your support. Thousands of other great items for preparedness, non-GMO, heirloom seeds, where you can actually grow cucumbers and make pickles. Infowarsstore.com is the umbrella site. Infowarslife.com is the nutraceutical site. It takes you right through the subpage. And there's also another company I work with. Uh, these aren't nutraceuticals we've developed, but these are great nutraceuticals, great uh, supplements, and that's Infowarsteam.com. That's the folks at Longevity. When you go there and sign up to be a distributor, you get big discounts. You can sign up for auto ship. Uh, and get discounts uh, as well. I'll get free shipping. And then the purchase there, Beyond Tangy Tangerine or Pollen Burst or the Alex Pack, you name it, uh, goes to fund this operation as well. InfoWarsTeam.com. Thank you so much for all of your support. And then there's InfoWarsHealth.com as a subgroup of that. But it's kind of a news site, but we don't update it. I'm about to redesign that. Okay. Where to begin now? Uh, let's reset. And let me tell you some of the news coming up. I don't want to just talk about ourselves all day. We need to talk about globalism, what's happening militarily. Turkey's been moving tanks and troops into Syria, just basically invading. All this craziness is going on. Uh, we've got Assange saying most interesting and serious Hillary info yet to come. Uh, U.S. second quarter growth trimmed to 1.1%. That's depression level, just in case you know. Because uh, even fake numbers, I mean, the, the, probably 4% negative growth. I mean, it's, according to Shadow Stats and John Williams, this is heavily cooked. Uh, we're going to also get into um, some of the other programs going on, some of the fake assassination attempts and other things. Uh, do you prefer ma'am or sir? New DOJ video shows cops, and if you don't, they're going to sue you, how to treat transgender people. <laughs> you can't profile anybody else, but you better ask a man if he's really a woman. I mean, this is how you bring down a society. But first... Hillary Clinton, I'm doing overdrive in the fourth hour with Joe Biggs and Anthony Gucciardi. And I'm sitting here and they run in and they say, here's the transcript. Hillary Clinton just attacked you. So I read the transcript, then I actually see the video. They play a few minutes later and it's much more than what was in the transcript. Where she starts talking about my dark heart. C couldn't say black heart because that'd be racist. Uh, they're even saying don't. Kids are getting in trouble for saying brownies. You know, oh, brownies. Oh, you're insulting me. Oh, call the police. Police were called. You know, this is the mental illness that's being pushed. But Hillary gets up there and she gets real emotional when she talks about me. And that's the thing about Hillary. She's constantly in a rage. She takes everything personal. She's basically schizoid. She has psychotic breaks constantly. And everyone must be persecuted. Dr. Drew fired, even though he had a hit show for five years, one week after he said she does look sick. You know, uh, staffers that reportedly are the, maybe the leaker, to, you know, shot in the back four times two days after it happens. Uh, beating Bill Clinton over the head with an ashtray. A lot of folks are going the angle that paranoid Hillary smears Alex Jones during conspiracy-obsessed rant. And I agree. I mean, I work for Putin or have contact with the Russians 
like I have contact with Santa Claus. I mean, it's not going on. She talks about this horrible, evil nationalism rising in America that's pushed by Trump or pushed by Putin. Nationalism just means our Bill of Rights, our Constitution, due process, private property, low taxes, the Second Amendment, religious rights again, which are being trampled, lady. They always go, oh, the new thing is global government. It's so new and cool. Oh, new like cancer? Like, I've never had cancer, but it's new, so it must be. You've got cancer. Yay, it's something new in my body. It must be good. No, it's not good. Unelected foreign globalist groups running us. Nationalism isn't coming from Putin. It's coming from the breast of the average person worldwide, regardless of race, color, creed, who are all human race, wanting basic self-determination and freedom. And they know that. But they've had the Politico, and they've had the economists, and all of them come out and say, globalist organs of disinformation, but orders to their own people. We are the liberal world government to counter the racist nation. And whatever your nation is, yeah, you're pretty much Brazilian or you're this or that. And you're like, outside groups are coming in to take you over and bringing immigrants in to be client groups they control because they're controlled by the state. Who You can't blame them. They're basically prisoners, underclass, permanent underclass. I'm not saying they're bad underclass. I'm saying they're being kept as an underclass, truly exploited as modern sharecroppers. That's what Mexicans are used for. Or other people being brought into the country. They are victims in many respects. But the point is, the globalists are the ones that architect it. And then use it. And then they bring these people in. They do all this. And Hillary says it's this horrible nationalism where people kind of finally wake up and go, there's some foreign thing that's secret that's going to run all our trade. And England voted to get out of this thing but can't get out but never voted to get in. I mean, common sense is happening. They don't want you to look at the man behind the curtain. But Toto, Matt Drudge, and you and me and all of us pulled the curtain back. We did it. We're hurting them. But it shouldn't be hard. What they're doing is outrageous. All we have to do is when they tell us these aren't the droids you're looking for, and they're the droids we're looking for in the back of the speeder, no, those are the droids we're looking for. I mean, they play this game. of Well, there is a world government, but it's different from what you said. I mean, the games, the games, the games. So let's go ahead and go to this clip of Hillary, and she's talking about my... Dark heart. <laughs> you mean my heart of courage? I mean, I'm not claiming I'm the greatest guy I've ever around, but I have serious guilt issues when I do things that most people say, why are you guilty about that? I feel guilty when I'm forced to defeat an enemy because I don't like to dominate people. Hillary is the monster who doesn't give tips, hates everybody, treats everybody like crap. I've talked to Secret Service. I've talked to State Department Blackwater people. I've talked to them all, and they say Hillary is crazy. She blows up hours a day. She's a psycho on a power trip. She shouldn't have power. She's dangerous. She's falling apart physically, has all these crimes coming out, and still thinks she'll survive as president. Let's go to the clip. Here it is. What happens when you listen to the radio host, Alex Jones, who claims that 9-11 and the Oklahoma City bombings were inside jobs? He even said, and this really just is so disgusting, he even said the victims of the Sandy Hook massacre were child actors and no one was actually killed there. I don't know what happens in somebody's mind or how dark their heart must be to say things like that. But Trump doesn't challenge these lies. He actually went on Jones's show and said, your reputation is amazing. I will not let you down. Well, my this reputation from is the amazing. man who wants to be president of the United States. All right, that's enough. It's amazing for taking you on, lady. And having courage like Trump has, he gets it. He's all in. He's standing up against globalism. He believes he believes we're smart. He believes he can have a complex message and that we'll listen to it and understand it and decide to have a referendum against you. He's making his move. Now, do I totally trust him? I don't even totally trust myself at the end of the day. But, but I know who you are. I know you're bad. We're going to put lots of clips together of you going, imagine the dark heart that kills 200,000 Christians. They admit that you're behind in Syria and tens of thousands and tens of thousands more just because they're black in Libya. Umar Gaddafi loved black Africans because that's their country. That's their, that's their continent. That's their place. 
That's where they come from, as all humans do. And he died. And you made a big joke about it because you're so, imagine the dark heart that after you have a failed state, killed 50 plus thousand people at the time she made that statement in Libya alone. And then she makes a big joke about it. A guy you set up. Let's play the clip. We came, we saw, <laughs> he died. <laughs> we came, we saw, he died. Caesar, I came, I saw, I conquered. You came, you saw, and killed people. Hillary, I bet has nightmares at night. I would too. You see, I'm not scared of the worst devils. Because I've been to the mountaintop and I've seen beyond it. And I know what's waiting for me. Because I energetically resonate with life and justice and everything that's good. And I have transcended you, Hillary. I'll live forever and you'll burn in hell. Paul Watson knocks it completely out of the park in this special report dealing with Hillary Clinton's bizarre alt-conservative speech. What she means is real patriots, Americans that are fighting globalist takeover and treason. Here is Paul Watson's devastating report from Infowars.com. Hillary Clinton interrupted her coughing fits, seizures, and three-day naps to attack the alt-right. Clinton savaged Trump for weaving dark conspiracy theories. Oh, you mean dark conspiracy theories like a YouTube video being responsible for Benghazi? What difference at this point does it make? She then proceeded to weave her own gigantic dark conspiracy theory, namely that Vladimir Putin controls Infowars, Breitbart, and the entire alt-right. And the grand godfather of this global brand of extreme nationalism is Russian President Vladimir Putin. <laughs> That's funny because I don't recall receiving my paycheck in the mail from the Kremlin. It's also what happens when you listen to the radio host, Alex Jones. Right, so Trump is the conspiracy theorist for listening to Alex Jones, yet you just asserted that a former KGB officer under the communist government of the Soviet Union is now the leader of conservatives in America. What does that mean? Of course, Hillary failed to identify the real leader of the alt-right. <laughs> Oh yeah, and according to another one of Hillary's dark conspiracy theories, Trump is responsible for bullying in schools. The Trump effect. Bullying and harassment are on the rise in our schools. Right, because it's not like Trump supporters have been viciously attacked and harassed by leftists for the last six months solid. But wait, it gets even funnier. Hillary began reading out headlines written by Milo Yiannopoulos. <laughs> Hello. Birth control makes women unattractive and crazy. Nobody wants to f you. Would you rather your child had feminism or cancer? He is taking hate groups mainstream and helping a radical fringe take over. Oh, you mean like you and Obama have been doing for the last two years? by mainstreaming Black Lives Matter, a group that has inspired cop killers and whose ideological inspiration is on the FBI's most wanted terrorist list. These are racist ideas, race-baiting ideas, anti-Muslim, anti-immigrant, anti-women, all key tenants making up the emerging racist ideology known as the alt-right. So posting dank memes makes you an evil racist, but openly praising and describing as your mentor a man who founded a KKK chapter called Black People Mongrels and campaigned against the Civil Rights Act. My friend and mentor Robert Seabird. That's just fine. Hillary also said that the alt-right is anti-women. This from the so-called feminist who takes hundreds of millions of dollars from a country that treats women little better than cattle. Nigel Farage who stoked anti-immigrant sentiments to win the referendum to have Britain leave the European Union campaign with Donald Trump in Mississippi. Yeah, the key word there, Hillary, is win. He won because the tactic of constantly calling him a racist failed, just like your speech. <laughs> but seriously, if the alt-right are trolls, who inside Hillary's campaign thought it was a bright idea to do the one thing you're not supposed to do with trolls? Which is feed the trolls. The alt-right only succeeds if you respond. You just walked straight into a trap. It's a trap. The people <laughs> running your campaign are complete 
idiots who don't understand how the internet works. This has backfired more than any of us could ever dream of. Hundreds of thousands of new people are now coming to our websites, where we'll continue to educate them about your failing health, rampant corruption, millions, Paul. and sneering, arrogant elitism. Thanks, Hillary. Racist, 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 racist. You have done well, Lord Vader. Trolls fire at will politically. I haven't seen this yet. We're going to play it right now, and then Mark Moreno's coming up. The Climate Depot with a bunch of big geopolitical developments we need to get into. We're not gonzo journalism. I don't set out to make the story about myself. But when Infowars and DrudgeReport.com and Breitbart and World Net Daily and Daily Caller and you, you, are leading the way globally, and nationalism is rising. Hey, we shouldn't have the foreign EU run our country when we never voted to be part of it. How the hell did that happen? You're racist. It, it doesn't work. The West has been the most untribal groups after we stopped killing each other 600 years ago and the feudal wars that went on forever. I mean, the wars continued, but they cut back a little bit has been basically the most untribal groups out there because of Christianity. Christianity has been what has really knocked tribalism in the head so that we can actually try to build a global society, and it's innovated. That's why it's under attack, because the globalists see it as a competing system. They ought to leave it alone. It creates incredible prosperity, but they're threatened by prosperity that they don't control. And even really smart atheists like Stefan Molyneux, I want to get him back on next week, admit they go, no, I, I, I get it. Christianity is an operating system, the Christianity of Jesus, the reformer, God, is a great operating system compared to atheism, globalism, statism, Islam, all these other groups. It does create good societies. There's been some bad Christians and people that twist it and do bad things. But overall, the globalists don't like Christianity because it doesn't fit into their system. So when we start the next segment... I haven't seen it yet. We're going to roll this uh, piece that uh, was put together by Josh today. I, I just walked in at like 10 this morning and I said, Hillary's saying I have a dark heart. She says, I'm this evil, horrible person. She's the one always bragging about killing people and threatening Obama that he could end up like, you know, RFK in 2008. She's made all these other arrogant statements. Throw something together to illustrate that. So it just came into the computer. And he just sent it over to the control room. We're going to premiere that when we come back and then go to Mark Moreno at about 40 after. And then we're going to take your phone calls. If you want to start holding now, you're welcome. You know what? I'll just give the number out in like 24 after or so so you're not holding too long. And then we'll take some phone calls a little bit into the next hour. And then David Knight and Mark Hall are uh, hosting the fourth hour of the Worldwide Transmission. And then I will return this Sunday, 4 to 6 p.m. for the Sunday Live Original Edition. So that's all coming up today. Uh, we're also going to get into Russia. U.S. must separate Syrian rebels, terrorists before condemning Assad. Russia keeps saying. And our Pentagon has come out. It's been proven. I remember talking to Colonel Schaefer, and it was classified, and he couldn't tell me. But I'd already talked to other people, and they said that 90-plus percent was in the congressional briefing. I would interviewed a congressman. I interviewed Jones, actually, uh, years ago, Walter Jones. And he'd said... Well, we were given briefings, I can't get into it, but the vast majority are jihadists, Wahhabis out of Saudi Arabia, or Saudi Arabian funded out of, uh, you know, the different stands. So I asked Colonel Schaefer, I go, I heard there was a briefing a few days ago, this is years ago, but the time a few days ago, where 90 plus percent are Wahhabist, jihadi Sunnis. And he starts laughing, he goes, well, it's way more than that. And I said, well, what is it? And I went, is it 91? No. Is it 92? Is it 93? And he just said, well, and I said, 98? And he goes, well, just stop right there. He wouldn't even say, because he was actually, turned out, in those briefings with Congress, closed-door briefings, 98% are Al-Qaeda. And so that was a big problem for Obama, so they spun it in Hillary that, oh, there's a new group, ISIS. You know, that's who popped up. No, it's Al-Qaeda. They brought him there. They did it. And Russia's saying... Look, stop saying get rid of Assad. We'll get, Assad will step down as soon as you pull Al-Qaeda back. We're going to our guests in a moment, but let's be clear. 
there were FBI agents in the newspapers at the time and translators like Sabelle Edmonds and you name it, who I had on that said the Saudis brought in 15 people. They were protected. The FBI was ordered to not go after them. They were allowed to go to the flight schools. The flight schools called in Minnesota and Arizona and Texas and Florida and were told, stand down. And then I talked about how the congressional report back in 2002 said there was 28 pages that showed Saudi involvement and a stand down. So I said it's an inside job, bipartisanly, covering up the Saudi connection, the Carlisle group. I've been proven right, but I didn't say that the whole government blew up the towers or any of that. They misrepresent. And then they go on to say that I say nobody died at Sandy Hook. The children were actors. No, I didn't say that. Some people said that. We had debates on air but between groups. I got criticized by the real conspiracy theorists for saying no. I mean, I don't think they could pull off something like that, but Anderson Cooper did say he was there, and he turns, he's on a blue screen, he disappears. I mean, I just said it needs to be investigated, and I don't trust him because they got caught hiding the decline of temperature data in ClimateGate six years ago. They've been caught uh, lying about so many things. Lying, Gruber saying, thank God the American people are dumb and don't have attention spans. You know, Obama hired me to... Screw him. Ha, ha, ha. I mean, he's on C-SPAN saying this. These people are disconnected. And they're getting crazier and crazier. And what does Hillary think she's doing coming out and attacking me by name and then creating straw men? It's crazy. Mark Moreno is one of the leading fighters against the global carbon tax, which is the world government program the Pope now admits they want. It's incredible. ClimateDepot.com, ClimateHustle.org. He is the producer of the award-winning Climate Hustle. When he was in Paris, they wanted him arrested and publisher of Climate Depot. Now we learn that there are a bunch of governors and legislatures meeting about arresting Mark Moreno. Uh, this has come out in the Associated Press for denying climate change uh, that's man-made. Uh, Mark Moreno currently serves as communications director for the Committee for Conservative Tomorrow and executive editor and chief correspondent for the award-winning ClimateDepot.com, the number one website in the world fighting this uh, takeover. A global warming and eco-news center founded in 2009. And he formerly was congressional advisor to the Republicans and Senator Inhofe's top guy. I, I'm, I'm not going to go over all of it. Moreno released his A to Z climate reality check report at the UN COP17 conference in South Africa. And it just goes on from there. Uh, thank you for joining us, Mr. Moreno, uh, with the latest developments with these fraudsters. Am I wrong or does it seem like they're kind of on their heels right now, doubling down with their propaganda, even if they steal the election? I just have a just, just an overall view that these people, the wheels are coming off. They're falling apart. Well, this election is very important. And first of all, Alex, congratulations to you to draw attacks from Hillary Clinton. That is that is a great honor that that shows that they recognize your power and your influence and your uh, history here to be named by a presidential candidate, Hillary Clinton. So I just want to say congratulations to you from from the alt right out here in America. I don't know. I don't even know. I didn't know that term until uh, they started. <laughs> started so what she, well, what she means is we're not the establishment, you know, yeah. Republicans that are in so much trouble politically. And I think this signifies, again, the huge realignment that's happening, my friend. Yeah. And to answer your question, I interviewed the Weather Channel founder, John Coleman, the meteorologist who's called global warming a scam from the, almost the very beginning. And his concern, and I'm saying this a lot, is, yes, here's the deal. Skeptics have won every aspect of the climate debate up until now. And that means political opinion, the scientific battle, the political battle. Gallup polling shows there's no more concern about global warming now than there was in the 1980s. They've failed. Uh, and in terms of the science, we have in my film, Climate, uh, Climate Hustle, you can actually out on DVD this week, climatehustle.com, details the politically left scientists, who French socialist scientists, scientists who endorsed Obama, and scientists who voted for Al Gore coming out skeptical on global warming. So the scientific battle has been won. And as you mentioned, the A to Z, on every metric, including hurricanes, tornadoes, floods, droughts, they're actually less storminess by, on the climate timescales according to the data. No matter what Al Gore says, no matter what, NPR and all these other news, you know, ridiculous sites are claiming. So to answer your question in a real simple term, the problem is because of President Obama's, and I'll use the word cunning, he has bypassed democracy. So even though skeptics stopped climate bill after climate bill, half a dozen in 2003, 2005, 2008, 2010, from going through, President Obama decided I'll go through executive order. 
you slid them right in. We essentially have a de facto climate bill imposed on us without a vote of Congress. And now we have a UN climate treaty the US is adhering to without Senate ratification. They claim they don't need Senate ratification. They're bypassing the constitution now on an international agreement. So if the next president, i.e. Hillary, continues these policies, John Coleman, the Weather Channel founder, is now openly saying he thinks Al Gore may have won the climate debate and a whole host of other issues. Because for, keep in mind, the global warming issue is about U.S. sovereignty. And you mentioned it before, their phrase is global governance uh, with the United Nations. That's what they're seeking and that's what they're achieving. If the next president is Hillary Clinton and she continues Barack Obama's policies, and she said she will, skeptics and Americans have lost the climate debate well, even though we won every single battle of the debate, we may lose the war because of Obama's willingness to bypass democracy and because it's below the radar and it's because the Republican Party has done squat about it. And to translate this in to the bottom line, multinational select corporations that aren't free market are creating a monopoly on energy, exempting their own companies like we've seen with General Electric and really putting a global tax on human activity. I mean, this is the final takeover. Yes, I mean, they're, they're, what they're trying to do now, and here's the bottom line, the reason this is the tipping point is if, in, if, if it's another four to eight years now of domestic climate legislation, legislation now through the EPA and international by adhering to a UN treaty that was never ratified, just think of every Republican president, beginning with Ronald Reagan on, who said that we're going to dismantle the Department of Education. And guess what? It never happened. Once these become codified and solidified in the next four to eight years of the, of the next president, we are going to be stuck. They're dug in. Them. So how do we stop them? I mean, you and Lord Moncton have gotten so many other documents, a la WikiLeaks type operations and stopped them. Uh, more and more of this is coming out. Soros is in a lot of trouble right now as his memos are coming out. I mean, is there a silver lining to stop this fraud? Well, the silver lining, first of all, is awareness. And let's talk about Donald Trump for a moment. He is the first Republican nominee in the history to be a strong global warming skeptic who actually gets the climate scam. And here's why. If you go back, first of all, it wasn't an issue in Ronald Reagan, but the first George Bush, George H.W. Bush, was a disaster. He signed on the Rio Earth Treaty, uh, Summit and signed up a treaty that got ratified, which then led to the, all these UN climate treaties. He was a globalist. And the first George Bush laid the groundwork to, to stripping away U.S. sovereignty, followed by Bill Clinton, who then signed the Kyoto Protocol and started pushing all these climate regulations. And then George W. Bush comes in. He rubber stamps the U.N. reports. He accepts all the science. He actually ran on climate bills and then he, you know, he stopped him when he was president. But that's because Democrats didn't support it. And then you had uh, Mitt Romney, who was a disaster when it came to climate and basically sounded like Al Gore. You had John McCain, who was actually a sponsor. Every previous Republican nominee, at least you know, since George H.W. Bush, was a disaster on this issue. Donald Trump offers the best hope for one simple reason. Donald Trump has said he will withdraw. We're calling it Clexit. Uh, the Brexit was the British exit from the EU. Well, Clexit is the climate exit from the UN Climate Treaty. Donald Trump will lead the Clexit of the United States from the UN Climate Treaty, exit it. He's already said he's going to defund the United Nations Climate Panel, and he will over and get rid of and rescind the executive orders from the EPA Climate Bill. Those three things are simple. I just wish Donald Trump would hammer it at every speech because the American people aren't aware of what's at stake, certainly when it comes to the climate and the global warming, how they literally may win the debate without the public being aware that they're winning. Mark Moreno is our guest, uh, separately paralleling what's happening with global governance and uh, the rest of this. Uh, you obviously a few months ago interviewed Bill Nye, the science guy, and he looked at you straight face and said, well, yeah, we might need to arrest you. And he had this power trip look on his face. It's weird to see all these little politicos and media hacks who are such wimps physically getting off on talking about the apparatus of political oppression of speech which is obviously the bane of any free society. And to have all these major newspapers now, we talk about this years ago when the UK was talking about, you know, arresting Lord Moncton or signs up saying arrest you and people calling for it in Paris when you premiered your film earlier this year. Uh, but but now it's in major newspapers going, yeah, we're, we're looking at arresting people uh, who, you know, deny this. And they claim, oh, it's like tobacco companies, you know, saying cigarettes aren't bad for you. No, it's not.
It's, it's, it's scientists and people across the board saying it's the sun. It's not carbon dioxide. Absolutely. Yeah. First of all, I interviewed Bill Nye and I asked him and in the film Climate Hustle, we feature Robert F. Kennedy Jr., someone else who doesn't seem physically well. I don't know what he's got, but he's got a very halting manner of speaking and seem, doesn't seem very well physically. But he's openly calling for jailing global warming skeptics. Robert F. Kennedy Jr. calling saying we belong at The Hague with three square meals and a cot with all the other war criminals. I asked Bill Nye about this, and Bill Nye's answer was, well, we'll see. You know, tobacco people misrepresented, and they're misrepresented. You're committing fraud. Bill Nye is open to the idea, and you're right. He had a little grin on his face like he was intrigued by the idea of jailing his dissenting opponents because they don't agree with him. And this is, this is continuing. The California legislators talked about this. By the way, California Governor Jerry Brown, this is the absurdity of how far we've come. The, he is now a new climate bill. California, I don't know how anyone can, no can live in California, number one. Moonbeam. But, but number two, he extended his climate bill another 10 years. And the local media in Sacramento is reporting this as Governor Brown is going to cool the earth one to two degrees if his legislation goes into effect. As though Governor Jerry Brown now in California has, a, has, has turned into some kind of magical wizard that can command the temperature of the earth. That is how <laughs> Well, and in Venezuela, they have the kids before they get the school lunch program pray to Hugo Chavez for five years. I mean, you know, it started five years ago. Now they've suspended that program as the as the country collapses. So I guess praying to Chavez doesn't get you the school lunch. That's right. It doesn't. And here's the thing. We're, we're talking about all this intimidation and, and Hillary's bringing up the, you know, this race issue. In my film, Climate Hustle, we have Al Gore talking about how the population of Africa is out of control. and There's going to be too many Africans. A white, wealthy, Western politician, Al Gore, lamenting too many Africans. Guess what Al Gore's solution is? Quote, fertility management. That's what we need in Africa. We have a white politician calling for managing Africans so that we'll have less black people That's in the right. world. That's right. Your film's now available uh, at theclimatehustle.org uh, coming out this week. Uh, we also have the new film, Amerageddon, dealing with uh, EMP and other things available at InfoWarsStore.com. And all these films are great to wake up, but particularly, in fact, I want to carry your film. As soon as you're ready, I I'd like to get some of these and carry these uh, online at our store, Mark, because this is something everybody should show their church. Uh, teachers should go you know, and get authorized you know, to counter Al Gore's Polar Bears Can't Swim and Penguins Can't Swim diatribe and actually see this film and actually see Al Gore say this because we have something similar uh, we have Obama going to Africa and saying you can't have cars, you can't have air conditioning. Here's that clip. Uh, ultimately, if you think about all the youth that everybody's mentioned here in Africa, if everybody's raising living standards to the point where everybody's got a car and everybody's got air conditioning and everybody's got a big house, uh, well, the planet will boil over. So, again, w obviously, folks, this is the, this is the permanent class state where the, he flies in on jumbo jets with 10 jets behind him, billions of dollars a year flying him around, all this carbon footprint. Thank God, because the Earth's starved for carbon dioxide right now, so it's a great thing. All this, and he tells him, you can't have a car or air conditioning. This is how you sell true racism, telling Africans you can't have anything nice. Not, we're cleaning up technologies and innovating, and once a country industrializes, population growth slows and stagnates, which they know. No, just, sorry, you can't have a car or air conditioning. And they're teaching them now not to have anything. This is an attack on prosperity. Uh, and the Obama administration has actually openly stopped major energy plants and modern energy from coming to Africa due to global warming concerns. Which, by the way, the Africans mainly are uh, heating things. As you know, he pulled the studies, cutting down plants. That's causing desertification, deforestation. The answer is bring the coal plants in. But no, no, no. Once you bring in modern energy, they stop using their local rivers as sewage plants. They stop burning dung, and, and, and they, don't, they live in huts made of dung. They stop burning the dung in the local wood. They actually have higher breathing in all this. Which, by the way, we used to do. I mean, you know, they're telling Africa under globalism, and you can't have industrialization. It's a new form of colonialism. One of the scientists I interviewed that what it is, is it's the white, wealthy Western world. Now, President Obama is actually not, you know, white, but it's the wealthy Western world imposing their view, saying, hey, you can develop as we see fit. It's a new form of colonialism, but this colonialism is telling people they can't have what we have, what we've achieved. In other words, they have to have managed poverty. And the U.N. Climate uh, Fund, which I call the Climate Slush Fund, $100 billion a year, which the U.N. U.S. is now participating, part of the U.N. Paris Agreement, 
They are going to be giving corrupt third world dictators, and by the way, third world is now a politically incorrect term, relegated to the alt right. Apparently, you're not supposed to say. Right, let's just say, let's there. say hellhole areas. Well, what they're going to do, the UN, is give this money to politicians who are best able to keep their citizens locked in poverty. And that means the politicians are going to get it. They're going to be able to build monuments and stadiums to themselves, name it, and they're going to be able to ensure their reelection. And meanwhile, they're going to keep economic growth down. Why? Sure. Well, well I mean, that's party. the Royal Commission in 49. The British government funded it. It's on record. It's online. You can read it. They said, if we industrialize the third world, they'll become first world within 20 years. Their population will actually start dropping after that point. They'll have you know less than two kids, which is whether it's Japan or the U.S. Or, or Italy. It's the same paradigm. And but they'll be independent, and we won't control them. So we recommend we block it, let their population balloon, and then exploit those populations to basically create a new colonialism where we use that slave labor to leverage the West and lower standards here, thus controlling the entire population of the world, and hence yes. the new world order. And, that, and that's essentially what they're achieving, because by 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 paying these these corrupt governments, and and you're not some of them aren't even corrupt; they're just the typical self-interested politician. You can try to govern and bring in all this development, or you can take a, loads of cash come your way to not develop. What are you gonna? What are they gonna choose? And then they also pick the scientists that go to the UN, and then they say these are the world's top scientists. It's an entire. And there's one more step. Then the IMF and World Bank with our tax money. On record, it's all been you know, released in, in leaks and things, 2002. They dictate where the dictators can spend it, and it's always with little sweetheart deals with the very same multinationals, and then they build windmilled farms and things. I mean, this is amazing. Well, here's the new, the new development here that's just happened in the past week, uh, Alex. NPR, National Public Radio, has come out with this new, has a climate philosopher, I believe from John Hopkins University, a man named uh, Patrick Ryder, Leaves his name. He's come out now, and he wants to have a carbon tax for children. And he wants government policy now to discourage childbearing in the name of climate. He's going around telling everyone this. And the Sierra Club has come on record now as saying it is uh, having children should be a punishable crime unless you apply to the government for essentially a permit. So what they this is, is they are implementing a one-child policy. They are now selling yeah. a one-child policy for the U.S. As China, as China is abandoning their one-child policy. And by the way, one of the global warming scientists has praised China's one-child policy and actually done a calculation about how much carbon, uh, carbon dioxide reductions China... Unbelievable. And let's go further. I have repeatedly, I have three children, repeatedly... If I go to trendy Whole Foods or whatever, had women, it's always women come over and say, you shouldn't have three kids, it's bad for the earth. And I say to them, oh, I'm sorry, you've decided to not have kids or can or no men want you. I mean, I'm sorry, they get really mad. I mean, it's a death cult, brother. These people are out of their minds. Yeah, and they're saying we need to protect children by not having them. Well, that's like saying I want to protect my house from fire by not building it. And this is, it's an anti-human agenda. Patrick Moore, one of the co-founders. Let's, let's talk about those numbers when we come back because they're well known. If we don't have 2.1 children, global collapse is what we're going towards. And we have to stabilize world population. That means clean industrialization. But that then proliferates freedom to everybody in the new order and one. March, the empire's on the run. New films out. Alex Jones. ClimateHustle.org. Radio Network. Get your DVD today. Hillary Clinton, as I've said, he is emblematic of the rotting, corrupt, disconnected Washington system that's Republican and Democrat. The entire Republican and Democratic Party establishment, what's left of the Republicans, is trying to organize against Trump, the American people, spewing incredible race baiting out of the clear blue sky, teaching that white people are inherently bad at the middle schools and high schools and elementaries, uh, colleges everywhere saying men can be on the women's teams. So it'll just all be weirdo men that want to go beat the women. I mean, it, it, you know, it, it's like, I'm on a women's football team. I'm on a, it's like some 400-pound, you know, guy. I, they're using insanity to control people, but it's true. These parasites are mentally ill themselves. They had a big Canadian study a few years ago, British study as well, that found the same numbers. If you're a liberal, a self-described liberal, modern liberal, you're six times more likely to steal, many more times likely to commit crimes, and... You don't give to charity, in some cases, 10 times less often than people that self-identify as conservatives or libertarians. You're a bunch of posers. And I look at Hillary, this facade, like a shaking in the wind, old barn, and here comes a tornado. 
and she's freaking out with fundraiser letters saying shut down the alt media alt conservative has no right to exist and her moron followers there's articles out today don't even know what it means so as bad as the news is that we're winning politically but they just move forward because they're in control I mean, there is light at the end of the tunnel because they're so disconnected. I mean, what did Hillary think was going to happen when she comes out and attacks all of us by name? I and mean, they've been ignoring us forever. We're growing faster than ever. So what if you ignore us? They still think they're in control. I mean, I know they're in control of the actual levers of the government, but not much more. I mean, nationalism's growing, the Brexit. Do you disagree with me, Mark Moreno of Climate Depot? Uh, of course, your new film is out this week on DVD, available at uh, the website. Uh, the climate hustle dot org. What is your view on the state of the world right now? <laughs> well, I mean, it's it's essentially it's moving toward what the what Al Gore has called the global governance movement. I chaired the uh, UK Brexit move, but I will predict this: there's no chance in hell the UK will actually follow through with that. I think what they're going to do is force a recession if they have to, scare the people enough, hold another vote until they, and they'll keep holding votes until they get the vote they want, which will not allow England to exit from the EU. The forces are very powerful that are against that. I think there was a lot of premature celebration with what England did, uh, but- No, no, I agree we haven't won the war, but we're having, I mean, 10 years ago, 20 years ago, there's a thousand times more activity against globalism yeah. now than ever before. There is. I guess and I'm looking at it from the United States perspective. If Donald Trump fails to knock out Hillary here, I think what's happened is with the presidency of George W. Bush and Barack Obama, the power of the executive branch has grown so out of proportion, so without checks and balances. So Hillary's going to be stepping into a dictatorial position. Yes. And the, and the Congress has become so weak that you know, as much as there's so much more voices out there and so much more activity, they are also accumulating much more power. So I don't know, uh, you know, it's hard for me to be optimistic as I look, because when you look at the evolution of governments, you don't find governments that sort of evolve smaller and toward more liberty. You get them a, a constant encroachment, growing and a more centralized command and control, more central power, and then it's either a collapse or it continues. You don't get this slow evolution. Maybe Ronald Reagan's first term, we had a slight blip in, uh, in, in terms of the freedom meter, but by Ronald Reagan's second term, you know, it, it sort of got, sort of bet, went back up and we've been the slow, uh, inexorable rides to more government. So I understand there's a lot of excitement, but I just think the power is so great on that side right now uh, of globalism and on, you know, central planning and global governance, whatever word you want to use, that I'm, I'm, maybe I'm more pessimistic. I mean, obviously we're in a pickle, uh, pun intended, right now but but with jimmy kimmel she opened that jar she's strong she's fit to be president she opened the jar exactly the i mean we're in a pickle right now but at the same time all i'm saying is i was on there 20 years ago almost no one knew the federal reserve was private almost sure. no one knew the stock market was rigged now everybody knows that and it just seems like yeah they can block brexit for a while we said that would happen but they never voted to enter it in the, in the beginning and people know they're going to be held hostage and, I mean, how long can Goldman Sachs fund the, the carbon tax movement while they appoint presidents in Europe? I mean, it just, this can't go on forever. It can't, but the, 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 the problem right now is if Hillary Clinton's elected, this becomes imposed upon us. This, you can just start with the UN climate treaty. That'll be imposed upon us, and we're going to go four to eight years into the future. It becomes harder and harder to win. No, no, I get it. I get it. We're waking up, but they already beat us to the finish line and are building the I'm stockade, thinking. building the prison that we show up. They're like, by the way, step right in. It's already done. Go back to Ronald Reagan's 1964 speech for Barry Goldwater. In it, he railed against uh, Medicaid, Social Security. What Republican would ever even talk about that now? These things become part of our, our laws and our system. I mentioned the Department of Education. We adapt they to the slavery. Department let alone lead a worldwide movement to, to, to do this. The U.S. is luckily the most free because we're behind Western Europe. But most of the Which is the only reason we're doing better than the other sinking economies. We're not doing great, but we're still doing the best because our leaders haven't implemented their plan yet. <laughs> yes, and that we're getting there. You know, the eight years, again, I don't want to, it's, it's really a bipartisan issue. George W. Bush and the first Bush Near were probably every bit as much of globalists as President Obama. They, you know, they, they understood it. I mean, you had the first Bush uh, came up with the New World Order, if you recall, back in 1988, 1990. 
he tied us into all this entanglements. Uh, and I think the, the Bush family itself uh, has done as much or more. I agree, and that's who the Clintons vacation with. I mean, we better repudiate this lady. And all these leftists that hate the TPP and how they stole that from Sanders, they are crazy if they don't vote for Trump. I agree. And here's the other thing. that The second term of Bill Clinton was probably the best in terms of you know liberty and freedom because you had total gridlock in Washington. You had, you had the media and politicians f focusing on a Monica Lewinsky sex scandal. Exactly. We had prosperity for a few years because everything was gridlocked. Yes. And we, I remember gas was 75 cents a gallon in, in, in the D.C. area when President during President Clinton's second term. And you had the Republicans keeping him in check. Republicans had the- And the founders Clinton. said, we want gridlock. They're always like, there's gridlock, it's horrible. Americans want gridlock to stop. No, no, they built it to tie government's hands. And the, the key thing here is that Hillary Clinton is no Bill Clinton. Bill Clinton in his own way was a pragmatist in many ways, but Hillary Clinton is not. And Hillary Clinton uh, is poised to, again, secure this legacy of President Obama and the legacy of George W. Bush of the executive order. What do you make of her openly saying she wants to come after the, the independent press? I mean, they're already in the news saying they want to arrest you. They have attorney generals investigating you. I mean, this is in the news, investigating everybody. I mean, this is getting surreal. I mean, these people really would sit back and watch us put in a gulag. I mean, they are flaming tyrants. Yeah, Hillary officials, I know they're going to come after you. They've already mentioned Breitbart, and they're, they're looking for all ways to shut down uh, this media. And they, they've been trying that for years. That's going to be harder to do because of just the explosion. I mean, you think of what's happened. You mentioned you came on, I guess, 20 years ago. Well, back 20 years ago, you didn't even have, uh, let's say, you didn't have, I don't think you had the Drudge Report. You didn't have Fox News. You didn't have the whole proliferation of cable. You didn't have all the, uh, the Internet. You didn't have a whole host of all this new media. It's going to be very difficult for them to shut down the dissent, but it's going to be even more difficult for us to actually slow the global change. Well, I agree. It's like whack-a-mole. They've infiltrated and taken Fox down. That's an admitted coup with the whole fake sex scandals. Uh, we knew that was going on, and Media Matters said we're going to infiltrate organizations and, and take them down. Politico said they would. They did it. Uh, and they've got Megan and others doing a great job for them. But if you expand, it's like whack-a-mole. You take Fox News down. It wasn't perfect anyways. It just spreads everywhere else. It's like you smash it. It just splatters over here, and they're really getting upset. Mark Moreno, the new film is out. Uh, I'm going to have my uh, folks in shipping call you and, and, and get that for our video and bookstore as well. Uh, but right now, it is exclusively available at climatehustle.org. It just came out. We're in an info war, folks. Get it and show it to everybody you know. Thank you so much, Mark. Thank you, Alex. Appreciate it. <sighs> wow. I just can't believe that we've actually gotten to this point where they're having hearings with, what is it, 14 different attorney generals and governors, secret meetings on how to arrest climate change deniers, uh, and that they're in the news saying, yeah, we're going to shut down Breitbart. And, you know, the Supreme Court justice comes to Drudge and says, look out, uh, they're going to start trying to shut things down next year. And the Internet gets handed over in two months. I mean, this is crazy. But I tell you, I look at how doddering and tottering, and I don't mean like an old person, but just doddering around Hillary is. It's just, again, it's a symbol. It, 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 it's a logo. It's emblematic of these dinosaurs. And they may have the power and the control, but they just are disconnected. And they can't deal with people that are so committed to what they're doing that they're never going to stop. I mean, I cannot stop. I compulsively tell the truth. Compulsively. Compulsively. And I just cannot shut up. I cannot stop. And it's the opposite. When they make threats and stuff, it just makes me have more energy. I, I can't stand it, actually. <sighs> when do I get a break? <laughs> okay. Top trending Google story. It's up on Infowars.com right now. It just ties into everything. I said last week, how long until Dr. Drew is kicked off CNN? I actually asked that question. How long until Julian Assange is dead? James Woods asked that two weeks ago, and then somebody tried to assassinate him, you know, scaling the building, climbing over the barbed wire, being chased by security, trying to climb to his window because he's about to leak a bunch more of this data on, on Hitlery. Uh, but here it is, top Google search. Oh, the, the people want to know, what did Dr. Drew say about Hillary? Adon Salazar writes, Dr. Drew show drop days after discussing Hillary's health after five successful years. They didn't even wait a month or anything. They just... How dare you? So let's play what got him canned. Let's play what got him shut off. You know, we have the famous tape of what got Judge Andrew Napolitano, his own show that was popular, it's canceled. 
and I, I can't give you the inside baseball on that, but let me let me assure you, they're in there telling other hosts right now, stop it or you're fired. We're not going to renew your contract. We may cancel it. And those hosts are driving across town at night to meet and talk about a new network. And then people say, oh, see, Trump just wants a new network. He, Trump's not going to give up. It's not like he planned all this to get a network. He's not giving up. Understand, comprende? So let's go ahead and go to what got Dr. Drew fired. Here it is. But the fact is, she released her medical records some time ago. And if you listen to my show last week, I just, I just called a friend of mine, Dr. Robert Heisinger, who is an excellent internist pulmonologist, and we just dispassionately sat and evaluated the medical record that she had released. And based on the information that she has provided and her doctors have provided, we were gravely concerned, not just about her health care, not about her health, but her health care. Why? Well, it's, it's hard for people to understand. I mean, both of us concluded that if we were providing the care that she was receiving, we'd be ashamed to show up in the doctor's lounge. We'd be laughed out. It's, it's, she's receiving sort of 1950-level sort of care by our evaluation. So we, we took a look at her record, and here are the basic facts. She had two episodes of what's called deep venous thrombosis. Common problem, blood clots in the leg. She also has hypothyroidism. And she'd been treated for hypothyroidism with something called Armour Thyroid, which is very unconventional and something that we used to use back in the 60s. And both he and I went, hmm, that's weird. And by the way, wow, uh, Armour Thyroid sometimes has some weird side effects. Oh, well, okay. So she goes on Coumadin. That's weird. Rat poison. Uh, because Coumadin really isn't even used anymore. Now we use Eliquis or Xarelto, things like this. Certainly the, somebody, the presidential candidate, would get one of the newer anticoagulants. Then she hmm. falls, hits her head. And as a complication of that has something called a transverse sinus thrombosis. This is an exceedingly rare clot. I've only seen one of these in my career, which is a clot in the collecting system for the cerebral spinal fluid. And it essentially guarantees that somebody has something wrong with their coagulation system. Well, she's had two clots, a transverse sinus thrombosis. What's wrong with her coagulation system? Now her brain's shot from brain surgery. And oh, by the way, armor thyroid? associated rarely with hypercoagulability. So the very medicine the doctors are using may be causing this problem, and they're using an old-fashioned medicine to treat it. What is going on with her health care? It's bizarre. i got to tell you, look, maybe they have reasons, but at a distance, it oh, looks that's bizarre. Enough. And you can hear the rest of the interview that got him fired. But, but, but that's the interview that got Dr. Drew fired. It's up on Infowars.com. If I put it back up, I'll give people the headline. These are very, 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 very serious times we live in. And, and this guy's not a conservative. He's not a liberal. By the way, that L.A. radio station he was on talking about that and several others, they took the interview down and got rid of the transcript the next day. So they are scared of this. As more doctors come out, prestigious doctors, and say something's wrong with her. Hillary has had brain surgeries. She's been in a hospital for a year in 2012, 2013. She's got problems. But does it matter? Jimmy Kimmel makes a joke that I'm concerned about pickles. And I said it was a joke that I was showing Caddyshack clips and stuff. They cut those out. I said it was a joke. Illustrating, though, that they were staging taking her pulse and having her open a jar. When you pop a jar of pickles, it pops. And he makes fun of that. But then when he goes to his um, sidekick, uh, who I called a security guard. He was dressed up like a security guard later on the show. You know, when he goes to his Ed McMahon, when he opens the jar, it pops on camera. That's what they do. You don't open them like a can of peanut butter. You open them like a jar of pickles. And, and, and so I trolled them. I knew they'd pick up on this. I mean, I had a good, you know, I, and I was like desperate to get on Jimmy Kimmel. I troll these people all the time. And, and I know, you know, what they pick up on. Bro, you say, and I'm going to skip this break because I have to have uh, the, the, the time constraints. Bro, when you say, okay, so what if we did stage it? What's the big deal? You're making it look like she's in great health. You call it entertainment. And then you threaten me at the end and say the New World Order is going to come after me when you're waving this, you know, this gun around. So let's go ahead and go to the Jimmy Kimmel clip, which we are analyzing under fair use. And it's about me, so I'm allowed to play it because they hit you with copyright all the time. Let's go to it. Thanks for supporting me in, uh, in my time of need because I'll tell you something. On Monday night, Hillary Clinton was here. She was right over there. And... Since then, I found myself smack dab in the middle of an online conspiracy theory. As you may know, many of Hillary Clinton's opponents have been questioning whether she's healthy enough to be president. So when she was here, I challenged her to open a jar of pickles to see if she was strong enough to do it. 
And she did it, and all hell broke loose. Thousands of people, maybe even millions of people, are convinced that I somehow rigged the pickle jar. <laughs> For real. I'm not kidding. One of those people is a guy named Alex Jones, who I happen to find very entertaining. He's one of those guys who believes... Uh, Bigfoot was responsible for 9-11. He believes everything. But I saw this last night. Alex applied his investigative powers to a pickle jar that he believes was loosened. There's no pop when she opens it. And she acts like she has to turn it all the way around like she's opening a can of peanut butter. But anyone who's opened a sealed can of pickled vegetables, whether it be tomatoes, whether it be... Uh, garlic, whether it be Smart olives, joke. whether it be pickled fruit, <laughs> knows there is a pop. You don't turn around it. You can't open a can of pickles that way. You pressure down and pop it open and then unscrew it. There's no pop. She acts like it pops at the end. This is completely and totally fake. I agree. This is a conspiracy. This is... <laughs> This video is about seven minutes long. During that seven minutes, he calls it a pickle can like 30 times. That's, that's part of the joke. Like I said, Kanye West. Kanye West. <laughs> and that wasn't the end of this. It went on. First, let's show it blown up, and, and then we'll show it in slow motion. Here it is. <laughs> oh, oh, no pop. Listen, she got a microphone right on her chest. Total acting. No pop. She just lifts it off the top. That's not how you open a can of pickles. <laughs> right. <laughs> Only a maniac would open a can of pickles. <laughs> if you're ever feeling bad about your job, just remember there's a grown man who spent a full seven minutes yelling about me in a pickle jar on television. <laughs> and by the way, let's say we did loosen the jar. What does opening pickles even prove? I mean, I have to imagine that one of the perks of being president is you never have to open pickles yourself again. <laughs> probably not even allowed to open pickles. So then, after studying the video evidence, the tape, the Alex moved to the physical part of his investigation. I'm going to show you again. If it, can we zoom in on this to show people what Hillary did? She claims she went around, and then it just comes right off like that. She does this whole fake like she's straining. In fact, let me copy Hillary Clinton real quick. Give me a wide shot. <laughs> <laughs> This is obviously a joke here. I'm making a Bernie Sanders sound. Going in a big circle. Uh, and then it comes off. They, they, they don't come off like. Uh, also narrating for radio. Like that. They come off like pressure. Just open. What the hell is going on here? Well, what, what are you doing, Joan? Or opening a can of pickles? To say we're conspiracy theorists. I mean, we're, we're countering you. Yeah. <laughs> There are people in the pickle industry who devote, devote this much time and energy. Yeah, well, we to noticed there's no pop. Pickles. I mean, I you're like full of it. The amount of time before the pickle jar gets subpoenaed. And if it does come to that, I asked our billing security if they had any footage of the jar backstage before it wound up in the hands of Hillary Clinton. And we did find some. And this might shed some light on this situation. Here, Are you sleeping? No, no. This is all a big joke. He opens it and it pops. Listen. Very important, okay? Hillary Clinton is going to be here in a little while. Tonight on the show, I'm going to ask her to open this pickle jar to see if she's strong enough to be president. I need you to guard this. Make sure nobody loosens it. Make sure nobody <laughs> taps it. None of that stuff, okay? Okay, Jimmy. It's very important. Yes, this must not be tampered with in any way. <laughs> okay. I'm counting on you. Okay, Jimmy. The future of this country could depend on this jar. Okay, Jimmy. Thank you. Hear it pop? He the pickle. Are you? Did you just eat a pickle out of that jar? I love pickles. Why are you a little pickle monster? I love pickles. Why? why Donald Trump wants to build a wall. But I don't want to make a joke out of this. The stakes obviously are very high, and clearly Alex Jones has put a great deal of thought into this subject. So to Alex, if you are watching, and I know that you are always watching over us, I have something to say. Let's get in. Can you get in real close here and give me a line? 
You just had to keep digging, didn't you, Alex? <laughs> the plan was so simple. All Hillary had to do was open a jar of pickles, and the White House would be all ours. Mine and hers. We had it all worked out. This went all the way up to Vlasic. <laughs> you got this, I guess. It is funny. I like Jimmy Kimmel the best of any of those guys. I like Colbert, too. But, look, expanding on this, and we're going to play the rest of it, the implication that he's not working for a major network that's pro-Hillary, the implication that he wasn't trying to make her look good and make fun of people, the implication that he's going to be at the White House and be co-president if she wins, they're building the straw man, just like they said that I say nobody died at Sandy Hook and they were all actors. No, I said the whole thing's very, very suspicious and should be looked at. Some people, other people did say that. So again, this is how they misrepresent. But then he gets into the threatening part. I mean, imagine if I had this little Hillary doll Somebody sent us that says all these true Hillary statements. What difference at this point does it make? Imagine if I, which I wouldn't do it, because even the image of her is holy, shot this with a BB gun. You know, they would send the Secret Service implying that I want harm against Hillary. I don't. I don't want her to be a martyr. I want her to, you know, get a jury trial for what she's done. But imagine, you know, he, they basically threaten me next, and then they can say, oh, it's all a big joke. But Hillary has this whole string of death behind her. I came, I saw, he died. That's why this isn't funny, Mr. Kimmel. Uh, but let's go ahead and, you know, CNN says worship this woman. We can play that clip. Worship this addled creature that is, is, is supposedly our savior. But let's go back to Kimmel. You just had to keep digging, didn't you, Alex? <laughs> the plan was so simple. All Hillary had to do was open a jar of pickles, and the White House would be all ours. Mine and hers. We had it all worked out. This went all the way up to Vlasic. <laughs> Vlasic. <laughs> but you couldn't leave it alone, could you? With your twisting and your popping and your poking your nose where it shouldn't be poked. You blew the lid right off our pickle can. You just couldn't stop. Could, but it stops now because I'm afraid this little game is over, Alex. Now that you had to go and open your big mouth, I have no choice but to kill these pickles. The juice of these pickles is on you, Alex Jones. They have insurance to be shooting BB guns in their other studio. The New World Order sends its regards. <laughs> yeah, they send it to Libya and Syria. They're starting a war in Iraq again and starting a war with Russia. And they send their regards all over the place. Millions of dead Iraqis. And George Bush says it's a good price to pay. So does Madeleine Albright. I know you're a comedian, but see, you've gotten political now and you're delving into waters you don't know about. If it's eating pizza and, you know, drinking beer on the man show, that is your arena. But ladies and gentlemen, I'm going to go ahead now. I'm told this is the same BB gun. I was looking around and I had, had it in my safe, never even used it. And, and Buckley loaded it up for me. And the, so this is not scripted. Kind of like I couldn't open one of the pickle jars right at first. We'll see if this thing even works. It's loaded. It's ready. And I guess that symbolizes some other poor witness. Maybe the latest wiki leaker, you know, who got shot four times in the back. And if people get mad at me making a joke out of it, well, it's okay. Jimmy Kimmel did with a known murderer that overthrows all these different countries. Oh, yes, it's very powerful. There you go. I asked Buckley if it would work on air, and, and, and that's an even better joke, because nothing ever does work. And he says, oh, yes, that's all you do, it works. See? See, that's powerful. That was not even rigged comedy. But I transmute the fact that nothing works right around here into pure comedy. The genius level is unbelievable. Oh, I can't open pickles. I can't shoot BB guns. But you can, Kimmel. That's the conspiracy. You are listening. Kimmel's a robot. Fourth hour straight ahead. I, I told him it would work. I knew it. I mean, what is the deal around here? A lot of folks sit there and say, Alex, you should never joke around on the show. They can take it out of context. We've gotten in this position by being a bunch of stuffed shirts and caring what people think about us. And then men just go around all acting real executive and acting real serious and acting like everything's perfect. And they've got all the answers instead of actually getting out there and being real. And so I do engage in, in, in comedy and humor, and they do take it out of context. But then we get huge publicity out of it. I only do it every once in a while. And then everybody tunes in to hear what the show's really about. I got to say, though, Drudge um, has had us linked since yesterday evening. Clinton targets Alex Jones. He responds, I'm not scared of you, bully. Thank you, Matt Drudge, for doing that. And, and I'll tell you what I'm getting at. 
basically multinational governments, multinational corporations, multinational organizations, multinational systems, media, you name it. Drudge is like the bulletin board in the global commons. And I don't want to get killed. I don't want to get audited, attacked. But, I mean, stuff's happened before. And I understand there's no future if I don't do what I'm doing now, even though, quite frankly, it's, it's, it's carries its risk. It's dangerous. But to have Drudge force Bilderberg out in the open with our stories and to focus on how we're standing up against Hillary when he's certainly a target as well uh, is a great thing. And Drudge has really led, as an example for others, not just giving him praise, the movement to have the libertarian patriot movement, the new media movement, the new enlightenment, the true liberal movement, they call it the alt-conservative movement, to work together and not all be territorial. I tell you, all those major sites out there that are true alt-conservative sites have become anti-globalist and have, and have gotten on board and have woken up and have taken action and are not backbiting and not backstabbing and not freaking out over who gets a scoop or who covers what first. Because we're going to lose everything if we don't beat the New World Order. And Drudge, I know, behind the scenes, but also with, with his work, has brought folks together. And I've tried that, too. I've really worked as hard as I can to do that because it isn't about having the biggest website. It isn't about being number one, even though Drudge is number one. It's about the responsibility of that. And so the listeners are always thanking me for what I've done. I want to thank you, the listeners. You come number one after God. But then when it comes to support and overall really helping our stories punch through, Matt Drudge, he's taken a lot of risks supporting us. It's, it's paid off. I mean, we've changed the world together, uh, mm -hmm. and it's a very, very special thing that all of us together, kind of that triangle of Drudge, Infowars, and you, the population, all of us together, there's no point of that, of that triangle that is, is more important than the other. It's all very, very synergistic. Uh, and the New World Order just doesn't know what to do. I mean, th they're not going to kill me tomorrow or shut my site down tomorrow, and that fixes their problems. That would just make it worse. Be like pouring gasoline on a fire. And so we're in a very, very exciting time. David Knight's about to take over. I didn't even plug last hour. We've got Hillary shirts at cost, nine ninety five. That includes shipping. That's why it's at cost. So shipping's like five bucks. The shirt's like five bucks for us. Hillary for prison, because uh, she calls me Dark Heart and all this. It's called the Dark Heart uh, Special, nine ninety five. Uh, and then we've also got the new Selenium in, the key missing link out there for so many. Uh, try it uh, for yourself today. It supports the broadcast. Bio True Selenium now in. InfoWarsLife.com. David, we're 50 seconds to break. I'm going to turn the baton over to you. What's coming up? Yeah, Alex, we're going to talk about uh, some new things that have surfaced about Hillary Clinton. Of course, uh, she's got her own conspiracy theories that uh, she doesn't want to talk about. But she's also been involved with actual conspiracies. And, of course, we're going to go back a little bit and refresh people's memories. But there's some new stuff that's come out. Uh, Breitbart is talking about revelations that were in Clinton cash about how there are multiple donors and board members on the Clinton Foundation convicted of fraud and other criminal charges that are now walking as well as everybody else connected with Clinton. You either walk or you get killed. All right, that's David Knight. Folks, we need your support, your prayers, InfoWarsStore.com, InfoWarsLife.com for the incredible uh, bioabsorbable selenium and your Hillary for President shirts at cost. Welcome back to the Alex Jones Show. I'm David Knight, your host this last hour. We're going to be joined at the bottom of the hour by a filmmaker, Mark Hall, who's done a very good documentary called Killing Ed. We've had him on before. We're having him on again because... Like us, when you get over the target, you start taking flack. And he's getting a lot of flack. And it's coming to a head this weekend. He's going to be having some screenings of his uh, film, Killing Ed, talking about the worst-case scenario for charter schools. And, of course, there's always potential for crony capitalism, for crime and corruption and uh, graft, as we've seen with the Hillary Clinton Foundation and other pay-for-play uh, types of uh, government involvement with private corporations, especially the large private corporations. Anytime you've got large corporations who are going to come in and get government money, government contracts directly, it's going to invite corruption and other issues. Now, one of the worst cases of what's going on with charter schools is the network of Fatala Gulen schools. And you may uh, recognize that name. Maybe you won't. We'll talk about that coming up. But as the New York Times pointed out earlier, they said charter schools are tied to Turkey uh, that are growing in Texas. Yeah, they're very large. We have the most uh, 
of these uh, charter schools here in Texas. We've got about 45 at the last count I saw, maybe 46 uh, here in Texas alone. He's going to talk about that. He's going to talk about the screenings that are coming up here in Texas. They uh, were shut out of the South by Southwest Festival, even though this has a lot of content here in Texas. But this is something that is nationwide. You know, we hear the pay to play of the Clinton Foundation. Uh, Fatala Gulen is a big contributor to Hillary Clinton. And the question is, is this a pay to stay? Uh, Erdogan is saying that he believes that the Gulenists in Turkey, and these are the two different power bases, and we're not saying either one of them are good guys. Okay, They're both Islamists who want to set up uh, an international uh, Sharia uh, uh, law, but caliphate. But this is a competition that is going on within Turkey. And, of course, Gulen is uh, uh, wanted by Erdogan. Uh, trying to extradite him, and uh, you've heard a lot of that back and forth in terms of the turkey coup. But I want to talk uh, before he comes on, of course, about Hillary Clinton. You know, it was interesting yesterday, uh, she came out of her prepared speech, her teleprompter speech, and she hasn't had a press conference in 265 days now. Okay, now if you look at the fact that she had her last press conference before any of the voting and the primaries began, Think about the fact that uh, it's not going to go a full year. The last press conference was December 5th of last year. No voting had taken place at that time. And, of course, she's not going to go a full year without a press conference uh, before the election on November the 8th. So if you want to take a look at that and take off about a month, you know, you've got 335 days. It's been 265 days. In other words, she's gone 80% of the time that uh, she's going to be before the electorate. 80% of the time has now already passed without a single press conference from Hillary Clinton. And I thought it was kind of underscored yesterday when she came out of her prepared speech, and she was eating some chocolates, and the press is kind of standing around, and they're kind of afraid to engage with her, and even ask her a question. And uh, somebody does ask her something about a press conference, and she just comes back and says, uh, uh, why don't you uh, have some chocolates? You know, because press conferences are like a box of chocolates, aren't they? You never really know what you're going to get asked. And that's why Hillary doesn't do them, okay? She is the Forrest Gump of politics, okay? <laughs> She's also the Al Capone of politics as well. When we look at her, uh, her conspiracy theories, okay? She wants to talk about conspiracy theories, and that was what the uh, whole speech yesterday was about. Understand, it is Hillary Clinton, as, as many of us have pointed out, you've got uh, Paul Joseph Watson's video of her with the tinfoil hat on. You know, she thinks that Putin hacked the DNC. She thinks the Associated Press is out to get her cherry-picking information. Even though she stonewalled them for three years, they had to sue her. She did everything to keep them from seeing her schedule. She put her schedule, her daily schedule, in the burn bag at the State Department. And I talked about that yesterday on a one minute. The fact that she said, you know, there's a lot of smoke, but there's no fire. No, there really is. Uh, she's got her metaphors mixed up. There is, when you get that much smoke, there are fires. There are a lot of fires, and uh, she is on fire. I would say, uh, you know, liar, liar, pantsuit on fire. But uh, this is in violation of the law to burn your schedule. Because the schedule, by law, is supposed to be open to the public. It's supposed to be transparent. She talks about Alex having a dark heart. And she talks about the dark corners of the Internet. No, there's not dark corners in the Internet. What the Internet is doing is shining light on her darkness. She has done everything to shut down transparency. She set up a private network of email servers to subvert uh, the law of national security. Okay? And as she's caught doing this, now we're starting to learn that it wasn't just you know, a mistake uh, when they deleted all of these different emails. And we're supposed to believe that she had uh, 30,000 emails about Chelsea's wedding and uh, yoga positions, okay, or routines or whatever. Nonsense. Nonsense. I mean, how... Foolish do you have to be to believe that? I, I know, because I talked to people at the Democrat National Convention who were foolish enough to just shut off that part of their brain, engage in the Orwellian doublethink, and just dismiss anything that doesn't, uh, that contradicts that Hillary is the greatest person ever lived and uh, the first woman who has to become president. They don't want to hear anything about that. They don't want to hear about uh, her other conspiracies, you know, about the U.S. Embassy in Benghazi. The fact that it was uh, all caused by some poor filmmaker that nobody had ever heard of. I mean, the, the nonsense film that got shut down. But, of course, 
He was jailed, actually, okay? And as Donald Trump and Politico, no friend of Donald Trump, Politico pointed out, uh, the original birther is Hillary Clinton, okay? This is, we can see this, uh, for, and they've got multiple reports about it going back to her desperate supporters as she was losing to Obama, even to the point we've got the Daily Cause talking about how she was asked about whether or not Obama was a Muslim, and she goes, well, I'll just have to take his word on that. We'll, we'll see what happens. You know, a very kind of pushing back, you know, not really saying, no, 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 absolutely not. No, she leaves that out there as a possibility. But what I want to talk about, and what we talked about when I interviewed Roger Stone, we talked about, uh, yeah, Vince Foster, yeah, he's gone missing again. We need to remember that, you know, conspiracy is actually a crime. It's a crime that is committed and charged against people quite often. And Hillary really is a criminal conspirator, okay? As Alex was pointing out earlier today, she talks about, you know, we came, we saw he died. These emails have now shown why they went there, why they killed him, why they created chaos in Libya and an arms bazaar for ISIS. Yeah, you really did create ISIS, okay? You just renamed Al-Qaeda, but you really did create this civil war in Syria and arm it out of Libya after you overthrew Gaddafi. And we look at the emails and we understand why they did this. This was a war for profit. This is the way they operate, okay? A war for profit. They passed emails back and forth. Sidney Blumenthal and Hillary Clinton. This is how we get the French in on this because he is pushing back, Gaddafi is pushing back against our fiat currencies that are put out there by our central banks. They're pushing back against our fiat currency here in the United States that's backed by the Saudis, you know, our petrodollar. Gaddafi's a bad guy. He's putting out a currency backed in gold that could destroy us. Okay, that could destroy us. And he wants to denominate uh, oil in that currency. He wants to help the people of sub-Saharan Africa, you know, the black people. And they sent her emails, and again, you can see the emails that have been leaked showing that they had people, the uh, army, the rebels who were overthrowing Gaddafi, were shooting foreigners on sight. How did they shoot them on sight? How did they identify them as foreigners and enemies on sight? Well, it's because they're black, sub-Saharan Africans. That's how they identify them. They said they're his, uh, his allies if they're black. So what she did was she took a powder on that genocide, and we see her doing that everywhere. Remember, remember that the first Gulf War was under George H.W. Bush. But under Bill Clinton, they bombed Saddam a couple of times. We've got a story out of um, uh, the Daily Mail that's up on InfoWars today. Bill Clinton bombed Saddam to distract from the Monica Lewinsky scandal. And this is something that all of us, you know, that vast right-wing conspiracy that is now the alt-right conspiracy. We were all talking about this back in the 90s. It was pretty clear. And uh, this is something that came out of this Muslim journal that is being that was run by Huma Abedin's mother, as they call her, an academic in Saudi Arabia. She's a Sharia law academic, just like the guy that Hillary Clinton had behind her. When is Hillary Clinton going to denounce Sharia law? <laughs> okay, uh, not as long as she's taking cash from the Saudis. No, but this is an article in the Muslim journal where Huma Abedin was an assistant editor. They claim Bill Clinton bombed Saddam Hussein to deflect from his Monica Lewinsky affair. And this is an article that uh, talked in the aftermath. This is early 2000s. They say it was bombed twice in 96 and 98. They said in the article, the crisis with Iraq has also probably benefited Bill Clinton, serving as a good deterrent of attention from personal crises like his campaign funding scandals, pay for play again, legislative failures, or the Monica Lewinsky affair. By occasionally bombing Iraq in the name of humanity, at least he has been able to look strong and presidential. Now, this is the, the two times, okay, in 1996, uh, the, the strikes were known as Operation Desert Fox, okay? Ordered the day after the House of Representatives issued a report accusing the president of high crimes and misdemeanors. And, of course, having an affair with Monica Lewinsky isn't a high crime or misdemeanor. Committing perjury is, and we've seen Hillary Clinton publicly do that before the Congress. This is one of the reasons why I think she was meeting on the tarmac with uh, the the Attorney General 
schooling her on what the FBI raid knew so that she wouldn't commit perjury with the FBI. But, of course, you know, she could be given a pass by Comey, just as Comey gave their buddy, their partner, Sandy Berger, a pass when he stole and shredded documents. But, of course, the previous uh, strike that they had in 1996 was ordered during a campaign finance scandal. Campaign finance, Monica Lewinsky. Welcome back to the Alex Jones Show. I'm David Knight. We're going to be joined by Mark Hall and talk to him about his film, Killing Ed, in the next segment. It is at the juncture of a lot of geopolitics, a lot of crony capitalism, a lot of the things that we see continuing to happen. And, of course, as long as we have a lot of power and money uh, in Washington, it is going to be like a black hole pulling in corruption. That's one of the things that we need to be concerned about with charter schools. And we look at the worst-case example of charter schools in this uh, documentary. He'll be joining us in the next segment. Before we get back to the news, I want to remind you that we have a, a new special that we put out in honor of Hillary Clinton saying that Alex has a dark heart. We have a black T-shirt that says Hillary for prison. And we have put it on a huge discount, nine ninety five a shirt. That's the equivalent of more than 50% off. This is the popular Hillary for prison T-shirt that you see everywhere now. I think it's one of the reasons that she called out Alex Jones. Uh, uh, that's It's uh, Hillary for the big house, okay? Hillary for prison. Uh, and that's a, a very, very popular design now, discounted to nine ninety five at our cost. Also, we have introduced this week Selenium, a good bio true source of selenium. And when I saw this was coming up, I talked to uh, Anthony Gucciardi and Dr. Group, and I said, I am really happy to see you selling selenium. I know how important this is. Uh, I have family members who alerted me to the ties with selenium and the studies that Dr. Group was going in, talking about how all these different types of cancers, when they had uh, uh, studies, people supplementing on selenium, how they saw reduced cancer rates, reduced rates of other diseases. Cancer rates, uh, different types of cancers, anywhere from 40, 50, 60 percent reduction when people get rid of their selenium deficiency. I know about that firsthand in my family as well. Uh, you can get that now, 1995, when you visit InfoWarsLife.com. And the thing that got me excited about this is whenever you look at a supplement and you see people do these studies and you know that there's very effective uh, in reducing risks of certain types of diseases, and they can go back and talk about the mechanisms of it, but I'm just, imp I'm just impressed with the results that they get. But I want to make sure that I'm getting something that is potent, that is pure. And that's what I liked about this uh, selenium. This is an organic selenium because they press it out of organic mustard seed. And that's something that's hard to get when you're getting minerals. A lot of times you get minerals, you get trace elements of other things that you don't want alongside of it, or you get filler. So this is a uh, high-potency selenium that is organic. This is a very, very important product. Now, before we go to the break, I want to talk a little bit about what Hillary Clinton said yesterday in terms of how she characterized Donald Trump. And this is uh, Joseph Fair from WND. He says, here's how she distorted Trump's effective outreach to black voters. She said, Trump has stood up in front of largely white audiences and described black communities in insulting and ignorant terms. Not like, uh, you know, kind of the way Obama referred to us as uh, bitter clingers with guns and Bibles, you know, that type of thing. Was it that inflammatory? No. What he said was this. Poverty. Rejection. Horrible education. No housing. No homes. No ownership. Crime at levels nobody has seen. Right now, you walk down the street, you get shot. And Hillary Clinton said, those are Trump's words. Are they? Are they false? Is it racist to say that, as Joseph Fair points out, Trump wasn't blaming the black communities? He was pointing out to them that Democratic policies of the last 50-so years have failed. I talked about this on Monday. I talked about how over the weekend in Chicago, where you see the black policies, here's one of them, gun control, okay? How does gun control working out for Chicago? Looks well, like they have some kind of a mass shooting event every weekend there, okay? 35 people shot, an additional four people killed just last weekend. In just a 14-hour period, 25 people were shot in Chicago, a gun-free zone. A gun-free zone. That's how gun control, how Democrat policies work out for you. Here's another way how that works out, of course. They like to say, you know, distance yourself from the Ku Klux Klan when he doesn't seek the Ku Klux Klan. He doesn't have them stand up behind him in the speeches like Hillary has Sharia law lawyers uh, stand up behind her 
or the way they've got uh, a La Raza, the racist judge, attacking uh, uh, Donald Trump and attacking him for saying, hey, uh, this guy is biased. Yeah, he is biased. He's uh, biased because he belongs to a group that says uh, everything for the race, for those outside of the race, nothing. I think that sounds pretty racist by my definition. But let's talk about what she did to actually encourage Black Lives Matter. Does she distance herself from them? No. She honors them. Okay? And this is what a guy who is Asian, who wrote for Politico, again, not a Trump organization, said, what I learned when I was attacked and spared because of my race at Black Lives Matter. Okay? Talks about his fellow photographer who has to run for it because he's white. He throws the cameras down. He tries to pick it up. They jump on him and start beating him. They say, wait a minute. He's not white. Leave him alone. Okay? That's the hatred. That's the hatred and the racism that Hillary Clinton has supported and encouraged. We'll be right back with Mark Hall. Welcome back to the Alex Jones Show. I'm David Knight, your host, and joining me now is filmmaker Mark Hall. And we're going to talk about his film, Killing Ed. I've got a DVD of it here, and the subtitle is Charter Schools, Corruption, and the Gulen Movement in America. There are a lot of things in this important documentary. Very well done, very entertaining to watch. I mean, you can get the soundtrack on Amazon. You can also pick up the uh, DVD as well. And uh, we're going to talk to him about what he uncovered about the Gulen movement. I think it is a very important story, this documentary. Uh, not even so much about education as it is about crony capitalism and corruption and buying influence uh, here in this uh, country from political officials, uh, people who are coming here with an agenda. And, of course, Hillary Clinton has a tie to this as well that we've learned uh, since this documentary. I don't think you really addressed it in here, but, no. uh, you know, she has uh, gotten a lot of money from the Gulenist movement. This is a movement that has a great deal of money that has been involved in the coup in Turkey. Uh, the Turkish government is trying to extradite uh, Fatala Gulen, rightly or wrongly. Where they're, I mean, the, I don't really want to get so much in the fight as, as the, there's not a good guy in here. I get people <laughs> sending me stuff, well... You know, who should we be supporting there? It's like, I don't think any, yeah. either one of them there. But uh, we do have a a, a base there that was uh, surrounded. They had the power cut off for over a week, uh, a nuclear base in, in Sirlik. And uh, this has reopened in kind of a geopolitical way. This uh, coup that's happened there has reopened talks between uh, Turkey and Putin. So uh, there's there's a lot of geopolitical aspects of this. But we're really kind of going to focus on uh, the corruption that's going on here. Give us a, a bit of an overview. Tell us about uh, the screeners that are coming up, uh, the screenings that are coming up in uh, Texas and other places, and uh, kind of the pushback that you've gotten in uh, media. Ta st start first with the uh, overview. Tell us a little bit about uh, the documentary for those people who don't know about it. Sure, David. Thanks for having me on. Um, Killing It is a film that took about five years to produce, and it's really focused on the charter schools that Fatula Gulen and the Gulen movement operate here in the United States. So there's an excess of 150 schools operated here in the United States. 51 of those now are here in Texas. Yeah. It's, it's interesting because when we first started shooting this film in 2011, there were only 35 or 36 schools. Wow. And now, I remember the first time we talked, it was in the 40s, low yeah. 40s. Now it's over 50. And you'll see in this film, people say 35, and then later in the film, it'll be 44 <laughs> here in Texas. Now they're up to 51. They're opening three new schools here in Texas. These are all taxpayer financed schools. And they're operated by Turkish administrators who are followers of Imam Fatullah Gulen, who operates this very large global Islamist group. A lot of Turks that are secular Turks believe uh, the Gulen movement is a cult, that it's very similar in, in certain ways, like to Scientology. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, but, there's a mysticism mixed in with the Islamic uh, religion. That's right. A lot of Sunni Muslims don't believe that this is truly an authentic version of Islam. But whatever it is, they're operating their schools here in the United States. They're generating in excess of $500 million a year in taxpayer dollars. Let's repeat um, that. That's taxpayer money. Absolutely. Half a billion dollars that is going directly to this organization. Yes. And, and people have to look at this. Look. If, if this is going to work for them, if we're going to have this kind of system set up for education, there's nothing that's going to stop the Scientologists from taking over the schools and starting to teach your kids. I mean, we laugh about it, but I mean, in principle, it's the same thing. You pointed that out. Yeah, and, and the Gulen movement has focused on education around the world. So they have in excess of 1,200 schools outside, uh, worldwide. 150 or so are here in the United States. But this is the only nation. Our country is the only nation 
that pays for these schools to operate and gives them in excess of five hundred million dollars right. a year. Yeah. So, and we know, as you see in the film, the interviews in the film with former Gulenists, former followers of Fatula Gulen, that a certain amount of that money is being kicked back for non-educational purposes. And given what we know now about the coup in Turkey last month on July 15th, and the fact that there's been a lot of allegations that Fatula Gulen and his followers were the ones that instigated this coup to overthrow the government, um, it makes me wonder, you know, did our tax dollars go in part to trying to overthrow a, a supposed ally of ours in the Middle East. Yeah, there has been a civil war, as you pointed out before we've been on. There's there's an ongoing civil war in Turkey between these two poles, the uh, polar forces, and uh, it know, just and turned hot at that moment. Exactly. Yeah. I mean, there had been a soft civil war in Turkey between these two Islamist groups. Mm -hmm. Erdogan and Gulen are both Islamists. They'd like to take uh, Turkey away from its Kemalist more secular uh, government style of government and you know just to say who should we support well we haven't been supporting the people we should be supporting mm -hmm. we haven't been supporting those people that are secular turks that's right those people that do not want a, a political style of islam installed in this huge geopolitical um partner of ours mm -hmm. uh, in nato it's so, always the false dichotomy isn't it oh yeah it's, they offer us a choice of erdogan and gulen as yeah. if like which one would you like to have run the worldwide caliphate? <laughs> <laughs> well, it's like, well, uh, I don't think I want either one. Cause I don't yeah, want and I don't know if it's just our mentality as Westerners, but we always see things binary. We yeah. see things left, right. And it's the way male, they female. offer it to us. They yeah. always offer us a, a, a choice of two things, yeah, okay? exactly. Uh, the, the, the crony capitalists or whatever will come in and they'll put everybody else out of business and you wind up with you know Coke or Pepsi. Exactly. Uh, Gulen or... Or do want? Yeah. Which one do you do want and to run the worldwide caliphate? Well, I don't want a worldwide caliphate. And you know, David, it's much more complex than that, as we know. Mm -hmm. And it's much more complex than that in Turkey. And I'm afraid that over the years, our government has been supporting Fethullah Gulen. That, that, as you say rightly, the Turks have requested that Fethullah Gulen be extradited uh, back to Turkey to stand trial uh, for his crimes in partaking in this um, this coup. And as uh, as of now, uh, we're about a month after the coup. Uh, it doesn't look like anything has been done to move that forward very much. There have been some exchanges of papers between our governments. Um, the U.S. government says they're not seeing any evidence that links him to the coup. Um, I guess this will play out over time, but it has led to a very um, angry populace in Turkey mm -hmm. uh, because they're comparing this. I just got off the phone before I came over here to talk to you today. I was talking with a friend in Turkey, and he said, you know, this is our 9-11. Mm -hmm. Many people in Turkey are viewing this as a 9-11 event. And uh, what, it, what if it had been uh, Osama bin Laden staying in Turkey after 9-11? Wouldn't you want to at least have him under, uh, you know, some sort of watch or in jail mm -hmm. until this uh, issue had been declared? And our, our extradition treaty allows for that. It allows for detention for up to 60 days of people that have been involved in these types of coup attempts. So it's led to tremendous strain between our two governments. As you say, Incirlik was a nuclear air base run by NATO. I have um, on good authority that our nuclear weapons have been removed from Incirlik and have gone to either Bulgaria or Romania. And um, I don't think our foreign policy in this regard, U.S. foreign policy, has done us very well. They're telling you that they're removed by who? By the U.S. government? Yeah. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Thankfully. It's in, yeah. <laughs> okay. Yeah. So, Sorry. you know, we look at this and you're talking about the uh, uh, the extradition uh, requests. Uh, there was a formal request finally made two days ago by Turkey to the State Department. We had Joe Biden talk about it and say, well, you know, we don't really see anything there. So I don't think they're going to do that because you, you've got not only the pay to play corruption that we see uh, just rampant in Washington with Hillary Clinton being the poster child for that. But you also have essentially a pay to stay. I mean, this yeah. is a guy you had when he first came into the country. Uh, he was he had people uh, who opposed him being here, uh, who were concerned about his uh, connections to radical Islam. And yet you had people within the CIA who wrote him letters who got him to stay here. But let's talk about what's going on with the schools. And let's talk about what's happening uh, with your with your film first. Let's talk about that. And then let's talk about what's going on with the schools. Tell us about uh, the screenings that you've got coming up, I think, starting this weekend, or is it? Sure. Beginning? We've um, started having what we call the Texas screenings because a lot of this film takes place in Texas. The largest chain of these Gulen schools 
are here in in uh, Texas. We have 50. But it is a national problem. It is this a is national problem. All across They're the in country. 26 states in our country. They just opened. I think this happened uh, just in the past month. They've opened a new school on Nellis Air Force Base, hmm. Um, hmm. which I just don't understand at all. You know, given what we know about this group now, why would the Air Force allow a Gulen run charter school on an Air Force Base? Very strange. And they operate as explicitly religious schools elsewhere in the world, but not here so they can get the money here. Exactly. And exactly. I understand why people, look, I, I, I want to see parents making choices in education. I want to see them taking over their children's education. That's become essentially impossible within the government school system because the control of education has, has transferred up the chain of command from local schools to state control to federal control. So that you don't really have any control of what's going on in within the school uh, structure. So they're looking for other alternatives. But I think we're jumping out of the frying pan into the fire. Many conservatives are looking at the government school system and saying, I don't want my kids being taught by secular humanists who hate Christianity. Then we're going to have them taught by people who want to establish a worldwide caliphate based out of Turkey. I mean, you know, th this is the, the situation. We have to look at this, again, going back to the dichotomy that we have. Uh, it's not always the solutions that are offered to us are really the ones that we really ought to be seriously considering. Well, and you're right. You know, parents are looking for alternatives. And there has been this charter movement in our country for the 20 years or so. What we're seeing and what we've seen in the research that we did for this film is there is a trend line away from the parent-involved single charters that used to exist to these large corporate managed uh, charter school networks, uh, both statewide and nationally. And so, whereas it might have worked one-off with very parent-involved uh, charter locations, you're seeing, like the Gulen movement, uh, operating 155 locations with 72,000 children mm -hmm. around So it starts United. out like a small business, starts out with some parents coming in, say, let's create a charter school, yeah. and then they get tax uh, payer money for that. But then the rules are established, and the wise guys uh, and well, the crony capitalists will come yeah. in, or the foreign influences will come in and say, oh, here's the rules. And here's how we can uh, take this over, just like we would come in with a, a big box retailer and drive out all the mom and pops that are there. And that's essentially what we're seeing. And whenever you've got that kind of concentration and government subsidization of something, you're always going to invite corruption. It's going to be hard to keep that out of there. Exactly. And that's what the film goes into. Killing Ed really looks at the worst case scenario of a very lightly regulated system. And it also looks at the political corruption. You say, you know, you mentioned that the Clinton Foundation not only the Clinton Foundation, but Hillary Clinton's campaign and a PAC set up by Hillary Clinton have all received money from the Gulen movement. Mm -hmm. um, I don't think they're supposed to, but mm -hmm. nobody's really looking after our laws in that regard. That's right. Nobody enforces the law. <laughs> but we also see in the film many, many trips that have been taken by politicians, senators, all the way down to local sheriffs, um, state officials. And they've, you know, hundreds and hundreds of these trips uh, and politicians have gone on these trips funded by Gulen nonprofits. Not only do they operate charter schools, they operate many hundreds of nonprofit organizations throughout uh, our state, throughout our country. And those have been very corrosive in our political process. And they have led to campaign donations to all types of people. Um, and you'll see a list of them in the film. It's quite remarkable. Of course, they're also involved in kickbacks to construction companies <laughs> and other things like kickbacks to teachers who come in abusing the H-1B visa program. Supposedly, we can't find teachers in this country, so we have to import them from Turkey. Yeah. And they, as we've seen, as your documentary shows, uh, they're getting considerably more money than domestic teachers are. Well, that's right. One of the scams of the Gulen movement is to bring in many hundreds, if not thousands, of followers of Imam Gulen on H-1B visas from Turkey and Central Asia. Um, these teachers are paid a prevailing wage under our immigration law. But what happens, and we have it documented in the film, uh, all of those people that are followers of Gulen that are coming in to teach at these schools are uh, made to swear that they're going to follow something called a Tuzuk, which is essentially their bylaws. And what that means is they get paid only a certain fraction of what they're required by our law to get. And the rest of that money, uh, you know, goes back to the non-educational purposes of the Gulen movement. Mm. So it's, it's really a scam in a lot of different ways. And I don't think many people know this story. It's been quite underreported. Let's talk a little bit about the pushback that you're starting to get here in this area. Because we've got an attorney. Uh, you sent me uh, his Facebook post, uh, Jim Harrington. Now talk about that post that he put out and, and who he is and why he would oppose you on, on a film. 
Well, we've noticed that we've had a tremendous amount of difficulty in Texas getting anything about this film published. Not even, a, you know, we've, we, we started releasing this film in February this year. And we, you know, my marketing guys and PR people have worked since February just to get a paragraph in, you know, the press in large media markets here. And we have had no luck whatsoever. It's been quite amazing. We'd heard that there were people making statements that, uh, you know, the film was Islamophobic uh, or that uh, I was paid by the Gulen or, or excuse me, the Erdogan government to make this film. And so, you know, there's an example here by this gentleman, Jim Harrington, who is a well-known civil rights lawyer here in Texas, mm -hmm. who is a very strong adherent and believer in the Gulen movement. Mm. Uh, he's, as far as I know, he's been to Turkey with them. He's uh, lectured at many of the Gulen-sponsored uh, conferences that they hold around the country. He's even published a book about Gulen's trial in Turkey for sedition when mm. Gulen was trying to overthrow uh, the uh, Turkish government, I believe, with the help and the assistance of the Gulen movement. So he's, he's published something on our film's Facebook page saying that, uh, um, you know, that I, I was totally funded by the PR firm in London of Erdogan or the <laughs> Erdogan government. I can tell you that's a total lie. Mm -hmm. That's something that is a Gulen talking point. And this is their motive. If you seek to criticize them, they're going to try to silence you. Yes. They have friends in the media. They have friends like Mr. Harrington, who I have a high regard for a lot of the things that he's done for the poor here in Texas. But on this situation, he is totally wrong. And in my opinion, he's sold out. Well, it's a tactic of the left. And we've seen this in other film festivals. Uh, look at the uh, the film Vaxxed, okay, yeah. that was about the uh, connection between uh, auti uh, autism and vaccines. And you've got filmmakers coming to Robert De Niro at the Tribeca Film Festival demanding, filmmakers demand that other filmmakers' uh, documentaries be shut down. They don't want yeah. a free and open discussion of what's going on. It's what we heard earlier when Alex was talking uh, to uh, Mark Marino about uh, from uh, about those who want to use RICO statutes against people who don't believe their climate models, okay? Yeah. So we can't have a discussion whether it's about science or whether uh, it's even about education. We can't have a discussion with these people. They want to censor their opponents. They want to criminalize free speech and literally, literally put people in jail for uh, disagreeing with them. It's very concerning that, uh, I, you know, I may not agree with everything you might say, David. Mm -hmm. You may not agree with me, but we should have the forum to be able to discuss these things. Maybe uh, we should have a Voltaire filmmaker festival, right? <laughs> <laughs> Where it's like, we disagree with each other on all these films, but we're going to let each other, uh, we're going to have this open discussion. We're going to show uh, what we believe and, and openly talk about this. But well, this film, was, yeah. this film was called uh, The Film That Texas Does Not Want You to See <laughs> by a writer in the Huffington Post. Yeah. And I'm, I'm starting to really believe it. I, I oh, see yeah. these posts. It's not only Mr. Harrington that is spreading these rumors and other things about me or the film, but it's also the GOP. It's also insiders in Houston that have been disparaging things and, and making well, it difficult to get the film out. It's a very well-researched film. It's very well-produced. And the fact that it was chosen, uh, that they chose not to show it at South by Southwest tells you how politicized that whole thing has become. We're going to be right back with Mark Hall talking about Killing Ed. Stay with us. Welcome back to the Alex Jones Show. I'm David Knight here with filmmaker Mark Hall. And I want to tell you before we get back to uh, Mark Hall's film, and he's going to tell you where you can go to see it, how you can get the DVD if you're not in Texas to see the screenings that are going to be happening this weekend. Uh, before we go back to Mark, I just want to let you know about our special, our Dark Heart special. Uh, we have gotten under the skin of Hillary Clinton. <laughs> she called out Alex by name. And if you want to get under her skin, wear this T-shirt. <laughs> wear it everywhere. Uh, and we're putting it out here at cost, nine ninety five. okay? That is more than 50% off the cost of our very popular classic Hillary for prison t-shirt. And if anybody deserves to go to prison, it is Hillary Clinton. I don't know. I can't think of anybody. This is the most corrupt individual that we've had run for office. Oh, true selenium at Infowars.com. Very important trace mineral that you need for your health. Look at the studies. This has been documented for decades. The important healthy effects of selenium. And this is a great pure source, 100% Organic, because it comes is pressed out of 100% organic mustard seed. Also, a very high potency form of selenium. 
So take a look at this, look at the reviews, look at the studies, look at how it affects uh, various health conditions. You can find that at InfoWarsLife.com. Now, Mark, tell us a little bit about, uh, we've been talking about this documentary and what is in it. If people want to see this documentary, and they really should, because there is nothing more important than the education of our children. That is the future of this nation. That's why people like Bill Ayers stopped bombing buildings and decided that he was going to uh, use the educational system to push his agenda. And so everybody understands that. Give me a kid at an early age and their mind for life. Okay, we've seen that from everybody from Plato on all the way up to Bill Ayers. We need to take control of our children. We need to understand what's happening in the schools. And we need to find a structure. And charter schools had some good things there at the beginning. But as we we're talking about, it, it looks like that's been co-opted by the big, powerful, corrupt uh, uh, special interests, as well as even foreign interests. People need to understand what's going on with this so that they can come up with a really good solution. Again, that documentary is killing Ed. Where can they get this? Yeah, we have several screenings uh, scheduled for Texas uh, this month and next. So our screening is Austin and Houston have sold out. There are no tickets left. Good. Uh, we'll have a screening in Dallas on September 8th. Tickets are available on tug.com, T-U-G-G.com. Uh, you can uh, register for tickets there. Uh, I will be at all of these shows answering questions afterwards. We're working on uh, a show in San Antonio, which will also be um, announced on our, our Facebook page. We also have shows of, uh, coming up in Los Angeles and okay. Northern California. Also, as you mentioned, the... The film is now out on DVD. It's available on Amazon, Barnes & Noble, uh, Best Buy. You can find it that way. And we're working to get it up on uh, iTunes and um, Netflix uh, later this year. Oh, that's great. Because that's the key thing. We need to understand. We need to have an open discussion. And the people who are trying to shut this down, just like they try to shut down everything for their own political agenda, uh, we need to keep this out there. We need to look at what works with education what doesn't and we need to understand that uh, uh, maybe there's something here in the idea of charter schools that we can pull out but unless we look at it closely unless we can kind of unless we can find a way to purge out these uh, big corporate interests that come in and take this over because that's where the money is uh, is we're going to be jumping out of the frying pan into the fire that's the end of our broadcast join us tonight at 7 central 8 p.m eastern for the infowars nightly news jakari jackson will be hosting tonight